What's, What's the, the scariest, scariest you've ever acted towards another human being? Also, please keep supporting us by subscribing. Part 1. Account 1. I'm not proud of this, but I think I should tell it anyways. I had been dating this girl for about four months. We were the perfect couple. Everyone commented on how cute we were together, how lucky I was to have her. Well, it turns out that she had been lying to me our entire relationship. She dumps me on my doorstep and walks away. For about a month, she keeps talking to me over Skype and Facebook and text saying how she doesn't want me to see other girls, how she still likes me and other bullshit. I decide I don't want to talk to her and block everything. School starts back and everything is perfect. I almost forgot that she existed, almost one day while I'm walking to my car. She comes up behind me and taps me on the shoulder while saying, why have you been ignoring me, jerk? I turned around, grabbed her throat and pushed her up against my car. Yes, I know, but this bitch was awful. I had been having a bad day, and her constant harassment had hit a nerve. I raised my hand as if I were going to slap her and start yelling at her that she's worthless, that she isn't even worth the effort it would take to hit her. I then toss her aside, get in my car, and drive off. This was me at my all-time low. I have never done that before, and will never do it again. Account 2. Long, long ago, I was a teenager, and hanging with my friend at my favorite park, the park has a railway bridge about 40, 50 feet above a shallow creek with a lot of large, nasty rocks. Unfortunately, it was known for having a few jumpers. My friend and I were by one end of the bridge, sitting on the embankment, when a teen girl walks up, as it was late night. We were wearing all black eyes, as I said, teenager, and we quieted up when she walked up. She didn't notice us. She walked up to the end of the bridge and just kept staring down in a way that made me think she was debating jumping. I motioned to my friend, and we walked up quietly behind her. Long way down, isn't it? I said from right behind her. She turned around startled, and I just went on, looking down with a 100-mile stare. The worst part is halfway down you realize, oh God, I don't want this, but it's too late. And you hit the bottom, and then you hit, and feel the agony of your body against the rocks for what seems forever. She turns back and looks down. And while she's looking away, I grab my friend and we jump back down onto the embankment. So we're just a few feet away. But because of the darkness, the black clothing and the steep angle, she doesn't see us when she turns back. She looks around frantically for a while and then just runs away. TLDR. I either stopped a suicide or scared the hell out of an innocent girl for no reason. The important thing, however, is that I amused myself. Account 3. I had just left my apartment to walk over to my buddy's place. I pulled out a pack of cigarettes and went to light up, and there were these two guys around 18 or so, just walk over and demand my pack. Now if they would have just said something like, Hey mate, got a spare one. I probably would have given him one. But he tried to snatch my pack out of my jacket pocket. And as I tried to stop him, he said to his buddy, Get his wallet. And I just fucking lost it. I grabbed this guy's shirt and just punched him as hard as I could in the nose and mouth a few times. He falls over backwards and starts actually crying. Like he's seven and skinned his knee. It was embarrassing and kind of made me feel bad, but that's what happens when you rob a stranger. They break your nose. His friend called me the psycho. Good times. Account four. In high school, I was a shy, quiet outcast that didn't really talk to anyone. A group of girls in my choir class decided that they hated me and always tried to pick on me any chance they got. One time I was entering the restroom as one girl was walking out, and she deliberately jabbed her pencil-thin heel into my ankle as she went to walk past. Watch where you're fucking going, bitch, she said. She went to exit the restroom and I slammed. The door full force into her back, causing her to fall onto her face and make her drop and scatter all her shit all over the hallway. Learn how to walk in those heels, bitch, I retorted. She tried to beat me up later, but I pulled her hair extensions out before anything happened and made her friends laugh at her. Oh, high school. Account 5. Out crazing someone is the only way to go. 
I remember some boyfriend comes up, pushes me back, screaming, you're a fucking dead man because I was talking to his girl. Well, I didn't know you, dick. So what do I do? I proceed to dance around him, stare him down while saying, wanna dance, motherfucker. Got a laugh? He ended up buying me a drink. Account 6. I typed in all caps at a stranger on the internet once. But really, the scariest I have ever been was when I was about seven or eight. This kid who used to bully me, named Dylan, was showing off his new baseball bat. He decided to pick up a rock and hit it like he would hit a baseball. It flies across the street, hitting my two-year-old sister in the neck. I tackled Dylan and started choking him. His friends pulled me off, but before they could get me completely off, I kicked Dylan in the face, breaking his nose. I have never been so angry before or since. My sister had to go to the hospital and get several stitches, but she was all right in the end. Account 7. So I'm asleep in my bedroom. My girlfriend is dozing next to me. It's 3 a.m. and I wake to hear my downstairs neighbor come home drunk as a skankosaurus with her boyfriend. Now some background. Downstairs neighbor girl's dad owns the house. There's one other dude living upstairs with me, and he's not my favorite person in the world. Takes over common areas, masturbates on the living room couch, etc. But tonight he was going to inadvertently become my wingman. The girl downstairs has a boyfriend, who as far as I know is a nice dude. I've smoked a few dubs with him, shot the shit, and generally chill. So I was quite surprised when I heard him getting angry and begin yelling at neighbor girl. Her bedroom is in the basement right below my room, so I can hear everything that goes on down there when they have sex. When they have a tickle fight, an occurrence I began to refer to as the giggle time happy fest, when they stay up and watch Netflix all night. Tonight, they were hammered, and he was letting her have it. I mean, he was really laying into her, name-calling, all manner of derision and belittling. It was intense. It wasn't long before she started crying and begging him to stop verbally abusing her. Then he started hitting things, not her, as it would turn out. But things very near her, he was also throwing things at her. Books, tools, DVDs. At the time, we knew none of this and assumed she was being severely beaten. The loud bangs woke my girlfriend. My God, she whispered. What is he doing to her? Neighbor girl began to scream, mostly unintelligible stuff, sobs and such, but also the word stop over and over and over again. It was too much. I'm going down there, I said, and started putting my pants on. What are you going to do? Asked my girlfriend. To be honest, I had no idea. All I knew in that moment was that a young woman was being abused by a violent man just a few vertical feet below me. I don't like dealing with the police, so I definitely wasn't calling them. And I had just finished a 14-hour shift in a summer camp kitchen cooking for 100 punk ass campers. And I really, really wanted some sleep. Just turn on your phone, love, I told my girlfriend. And if I holler call 911, I love you. And I was out the door, to my eternal surprise, waiting outside my door is my dickhead roommate. Did you hear all that? He asks. Yeah, I am going down there. You gonna back me up? I ask, not expecting him to do a damn thing. Yeah, man, let's go, he says almost instantly, and we're out the door. I go flying around the side of the house, heading for the back entrance to the basement. I almost collide with neighbor girl booking it from the other direction. She's scared, crying, a fucking wreck. Is he hitting you? She shakes her head. Is he being violent? She nods. Do you want to crash on my couch? I ask. I was going to sleep in my car, she says, somewhat embarrassed. Well, that's the worst idea I've heard all night. Come on. I take her back to my front door. My girlfriend, at the time a nursing student and so very used to crisis situations like this, is waiting wraps her in a blanket, begins trying to soothe her. Me and roommate head back into the night. We walk back round the side of the house and suddenly, hey man, it's the boyfriend. I look around, confused. He is nowhere to be seen. Where are you? I ask, obviously annoyed. Down here, he replies. The basement window. I look down and sure enough, there is his, drunken face poking out of the window right near my feet. In the dim light, I can see he is wearing a tank top. Note, you've got to be fucking shitting me. 
Hey, sorry we got a little loud down here, man, he slurs. We were just arguing about stuff. You know how it is. Actually, I don't. I thought... Now I was furious. First he wakes my ass up with this shit. Now he's trying to brush it off as a lover's quarrel. I act without thinking. I reach down and grab him by the collar of his tank top and begin yanking him through the basement window. He struggles, but I'm bigger than him and angrier than he can possibly imagine. Once I've got his shoulders through the window, there's nowhere he can go and nothing he can do. Now we can have a chat. Listen, you little shit, I begin. Here's the deal. I don't care why you two were fighting. That's not my business. But it becomes my business when your fight wakes me up. It becomes my business when I hear a drunken idiot like you beating on his girl. It becomes my business when you scare the shit out of my girl with your screaming and smashing shit. Now, I am well within my rights to call the cops, but I'm not going to. Here's what's going to happen. She's sleeping upstairs tonight. You're sleeping downstairs or in the garage or on the street or in an alley covered in garbage and contaminated needles for all I care. You are going to go crawl back into your hole and when you get there, you're going to pray, pray to whatever God you believe in that you never see my face again. He's terrified. I'm starting to lose my shit, start to feel a little goofy. I laugh. You know, man, I just finished a long ass shift in the kitchen and I've got to be up early tomorrow. So, you know, I'm really tired. I'm at that point, you know, that point where you're just so out of it. You just can't really say what you might do if you're provoked. So, Bottom line, dude, I am this close to destroying your entire universe. I let go of him. He slides back through the window, scraping his punk ass on the frame. Oh, and one more thing, I say, straightening up and stretching. If I ever hear anything like what I heard tonight coming from down there again, I'm coming down with a hammer and nailing your dick to a wall. Cool, wide-eyed, and quite obviously shaken. He manages to reply, yeah, cool, man. I turn around. Roommate is standing there, eyeing me with something between terror, disgust, and respect. We go back inside. Thanks for getting my back, dude, I say, patting him on the shoulder. No problem, man. I hope I never have to do that again. Neighbor's girl is asleep on the couch. My girlfriend is sitting next to her. She looks at me and smiles. Back to bed, she asks. Yeah, baby, I'm tired. Account 8. About a year ago, my state passed a A- no texting, phoning while driving law. About a month or two before an older couple in our larger circle of friends had become engaged, both in their 50s and disabled, they'd been through so much in their lives, and it looked like happy times were ahead. One week after the state legislature had passed the new law, but before it was in effect, the woman was struck and killed by a person in a van texting and driving. She was on the curb with her walker waiting to cross the street and was killed. I barely knew her, but this hit everyone hard. Account 9. I take the train to and from work every day. NYC. One day I was getting home later than usual from work, which was late to begin with. I had to go to the bathroom, something fierce, and couldn't wait until I got to my apartment. So I sucked it up and used the subway bathroom while walking there out of the corner of my eye. I notice a guy who was following about 10 paces behind me. I start to weave left and right, and he's still following me. I decide to stop short, pull out my phone and pretend like I'm looking at it. There were other people there, and I felt like if I stopped to do something unexpected, he'd get the message, and if he were caught red-handed following me, he'd have to have stopped short too. He would know I knew he was following me. He kept walking, and I breathed a sigh of relief, thinking I was safe. I enter the bathroom and pee, I get out a few minutes later, and he's there waiting for me, but again about ten paces away. By this time, everyone who was on the train was now gone and up on the street, so it was just us. Inside I was terrified, but I couldn't show him that. I glance his way, then start to walk. He starts to follow me again. At this point, I put my hand in my bag. My father used to make me carry his bowie knife. I know, I know, because I worked late as a waitress at the time and unsnap the sheath and start to finger the handle terrified of the possibility of having to use it. At this point, I know full well he's following me. He bumps into my back, full body press, and I whip around and put the knife up to him and deadpan. If you touch me again, I will slit your throat and leave you here to bleed out. I actually remember saying that. 
I gave him the deadest, coldest, craziest look I could muster, but inside, I was more scared than I have ever been in my entire life. Now, mind you, I am terrified of being hurt or maimed, and am a general scaredy cat at all times. But I was born and raised in the city and do not fuck around when it comes to my safety. I was not going to get raped or hurt. And I will be damned that shit was not going to go down in a fucking subway station of all places. He looked stunned, stuttered, I'm sorry, and continued walking. My heart was beating a mile a minute. I was fully bracing myself for a fight of some sort, but he just walked away. It was a complete knee-jerk reaction. And I know that carrying a fucking huge knife is not really a good idea, because what if he had one too and it escalated? But thank goodness for my dad, really, TLDR, went Rambo on a dude who was possibly trying to rob or grope me in a subway station. Turns out I had a knife, and he didn't. He walked away scared. Account 10. When I was in my final year of high school, my physical ed class went on a camping trip. We went hiking in the Australian wilderness for a week, carrying our own food, water, and tents. On the final few days, we stayed in a cabin. Pretty small and very old. Boys slept on one side, girls on the other. Now, I should mention I wasn't exactly popular. In fact, I had one friend at this high school, and they weren't on this camp. Several of the other people on this camp usually went out their way to make my life hell and make me feel worthless. Also, you should note for the story's sake, I was a pale, quiet girl with long black hair down to my waist. One of my more noticeable features is I have quite large eyes. On this night, I was wearing what I usually wore to bed, a long white t-shirt and light-colored shorts. So on this very quiet night, I decided to go for a little wander in the dark by myself, while everyone was settling down after dinner. After about an hour of just exploring and watching the stars, I decide to head back. I head for the entrance to the dorm area, which is one old glass door. One of the guys, let's call him Richard, who bullied me quite a lot, was standing just inside it. On a whim, I decide to scare the shit out of him as a little payback. I pull my hair in front of my face, put my arms out in front of me, make my giant eyes wide and open my mouth wide, a La Grudge style, NSFW, I tap the door to get the Richard's attention. He jumps in fright and turns to face me. I have never seen someone be so frightened before. He screamed like a little girl and shook his head wildly. He then sprinted into his dorm room, still screaming his head off and slams the door shut. People were now popping their heads out of their rooms. To see what was going on, I was now at Richard's door, scraping my nails down his door, whispering, Richard, why, Richard... Soon other people joined in on the fun and snuck up to his door to scratch their nails down the door and whisper other fucked up stuff. The teacher eventually came down to us and told us to stop. He went into the dorm and I caught a peek of Richard. He had tears gushing down his face. Satisfying. Edit. No. I did not become cool after that. Probably made things worse for myself. Also, yes. I like friends. Account 11. I was on my way home from work when I received a garbled text from my GF. I texted back and didn't get an answer, so proceeded home like nothing had been sent and just figured she was drunk. When I arrived home, there was no one around. And after making myself dinner, I called her and asked where she was. She was drunk and accused me of cheating on her, so I hung up. I went to bed, and a little later that night I awoke to her standing next to the bed shouting thing like... You think you're going to get away with this? My eyes adjusted, and I saw that she had a knife and was beyond pissed off. She swung the knife at my face as I rolled away, and then I totally lost it. I don't remember everything clearly. Bit. I know I decked her straight in the mouth and knocked her to the floor. She cut my foot pretty bad as I proceeded to try to get away. She ran after me with the knife and I punched her again, this time getting cut on my arm as she fell and passed out from the blow. When she woke up, I had the knife and had called the police. I sat on her chest with the knife to her face and promised. I'll end your fucking miserable existence if you try to manipulate this. I've called. We'll call him Joe and given him the address to your son's school 
and your mom's address. So if you expect me to go to jail because you're crazy, I'll have them taken care of. Needless to say, I scared the shit out of myself with that comment, even though I never called Joe, nor told him anything. I've never hit a woman before, but I feel that was justified, and so did the police. But I've never seen that side of me, and hope I never have to. Again, BTW. She was an awesome GF up to this point, and have no idea what the hell happened. I talked to her once to get the give her the key, and that was it. I got the fuck out of there fast. The police took her away, but decided there wasn't much more they could charge her with than Assault W, a deadly weapon. It cycled through the courts, and she got a good lawyer. In the end, she got two years of probation, TLDR. Girlfriend got drunk and tried to stab me, knocked her out and threatened her so she didn't flip the script on me, cops agreed. Account 12. I was seven or eight years old, and I was walking home from school with my friend Laura. Laura was from Vietnam. She and her family had recently moved here. I was a pretty reserved, quiet, nerdy kid, so Laura and I kind of stuck together. A block or two after we left school, I got the feeling we were being followed. A few minutes later, these two popular fifth grade girls came up behind us and started taunting Laura. They were pulling their eyelids to make them squinty and yelling shit like, Ching Chong Ching, go back to your country. This made Laura cry really, really hard. Seeing her so upset made something inside of me snap. It was the angriest I think I've ever been in my entire life. And I'm 21 now. I don't remember exactly what happened right after that. But I remember getting calm and looking down at one of the fifth graders. She was screaming and crying, and her entire face was covered with blood. I think one or two teeth were missing. I'm also pretty sure she had to go to the hospital. From that point on, no one ever messed with Laura again. We didn't really stay friends through middle school and beyond, but I heard she's working on her master's degree at the moment. TLDR, blacked out from anger and beat the shit out of another kid when I was in second grade. Account 13. I had just moved to VA and on the bus ride home from work, two kids got on only to find out they boarded the wrong bus. To help them out, I gave them some cash to catch another bus later on that instantly made me money bags to them, and whenever I passed them again, they would ask for money. They were about 15 or 16, I would decline, and they would ask if it was because they were black, which it wasn't, and is the shittiest cop-out IMO. Well, one day I ran into them, and I had just gotten some iced tea mix. They saw and asked if they could come over and play video games and drink iced tea. I, as calmly and creepily as I could, said, You want to just come over to my house after knowing me for all of ten minutes? How sure are you guys that I'm not a pedophile or a murder? And then I winked. Account 14. When I was in fourth grade, I remember being at my friend's house and getting so irritated with her that I took duct tape and wrapped it around her head about four times. I'm talking around her hair, everything. I just totally lost it. I couldn't even believe I had done it. Account 50. I jumped on my best friend in elementary school and was wholly intent upon choking the life out of her. I have no idea now what she said. But I remember the scariest part was that I completely lost control. If other kids hadn't knocked me off of her, I'd have choked her out until she was unconscious. Edit? Wow, apparently I'm not the only child psycho. Killer wannabe, T.I.L. for some reason little kids are stranglers. Part 2. Account 1. When I was in 8th grade, I got in an after-school snowball fight with two 6th grade brothers who did not get along with me. Things escalated a little quickly, and one of the kids jumped on my back trying to choke me. I grabbed him by the hair and pulled him over my shoulder and threw him on his back and immediately planted my fist on his face. That ended the fight. But a few minutes later, they come back with their babysitter who proceeds to yell at me about how much trouble I'm about to get in. Fuck that, says 8th grade me. I return to the school, put on my best innocent crying face, and tell the principal that the kids had jumped me. And when I threw him off, he hit his face on a rock and how guilty I was. Long story a little shorter. The kid's mom ends up believing my story over her little shits and makes me cookies as retribution. The look on this kid's swollen face when he handed me a tin of cookies the next day will always stay with me. TLDR, punched younger kid in the face, his mom makes me cookies. Account 2. 
When I was in college in upstate NY, I lived in a nice apartment about 15 minutes from campus. My girlfriend and I lived in the first floor and things were good. One day in the winter around noon, I was in my office room as my girlfriend was getting ready in the bathroom. I heard a loud slamming noise coming from the living room, which was right next to my office. Assuming it was one of my cats being an idiot, I walked to go see what they might have knocked off a table. I walk into the room to find myself staring into the eyes of a stranger who had climbed through my window and looked to be ready to grab my TV. He scrambled back out of the window, and without thinking, I let out some kind of primal war scream and kicked him in the leg, hoping to break it by slamming it against the wall as he straddled the windowsill. Then I literally kicked him in the ass and pushed him out, forcing him to fall onto the driveway pavement. I then leaned out of the window screaming, I know what you look like, and fumbled words together out of pure rage that nothing I said made sense. Never found the guy, but I terrified myself, as I am not one to want to harm anyone else. Couldn't sleep right for a couple weeks. Account 3. When my son was about two months old, I was driving home from getting a few groceries. A girl who looked about 17 or 18 ran a red light. Almost hit the side of my car. My son's car seat was on. I ended up turning my car around to follow her. She pulled over about five minuets after I began following her. I got out of my car, walked over to her. Hey, you really need to be more careful driving. You almost hit me. So my newborn son is in my car. You almost hit us. That could have killed him. I don't care. I had never punched someone out of anger before that. I never have since. I don't even know where it all came from. I'm female, relatively small, generally a passive person. She got a bloody nose, crying. It's ironic that I'm posting this immediately after a comment about how serious an offense assault is. Account 4. The stupidest and scariest thing I ever did was for my boss. She had been stalked by this guy for a while. This can happen when you work retail, but he was going all out. He was following her to bars, etc. She was pretty terrified. And then he went off and applied to work at the store. Clearly, she wasn't going to hire him, but I asked for the number. I called him up and told him I was the RM and wanted to give him an interview. He came in. I clocked out. I went to the back and took a long waterfall, hanger, those long ones with the heavy ribs to hold t-shirts on, and shoved it up my sleeve. When we got outside, I told him she was my girlfriend. He said this was cool, but I told him that no, no it wasn't. Because I knew he'd been following her, I shoved him against the wall and told him if he so much as looked at her again or tried to breathe the same air as her again, I would make the hanger his new boyfriend. He just sort of nodded, terrified. I told him to leave, and when he walked off, I shouted that he wasn't going fast enough. Also, I'm a girl. Account 5. In response to a theater class assignment of performing a monologue that evokes an emotional response, I memorized Lewis Carroll's Jabberwocky. I asked my teacher about a week ahead of deadline if I could perform early. He said I was free to perform whenever I was ready. I thanked him and sat down. It wasn't until three days later that I actually did something. Halfway through class, I started scribbling furiously, writing one word of the poem on each piece of paper and then throwing it off my desk. My teacher knew me well enough to understand what was happening. But one student became the unlucky participant in my performance. She picks up the papers and reads them aloud. Taws, Brillig, and the Slithery. And I jump in shouting at the top of my lungs, staring wide-eyed and furious from my desk. Twas Brillig and the slithy tubas did gyre and gimble in the wave. I continued the poem standing slowly and getting closer into her face, stepping closer and forcing her back all the while, getting quieter but no less enraged. I kept it up until she is sitting in her seat, leaning as far back as possible until I get right up against her ear and whisper the last line, I ask, in my best Davy Jones impression. Do you fear death? When she nods, I take a step back, take a bow and announce, seen, I got a 100, on the assignment, TLDR. I scared the living shit out of a girl with a psychotic recital of Jabberwocky to get an A on a theater assignment. Account 6. I was thinking about this the other day and still wonder what the fuck was going through my mind when I did it. 
I was about 17, 18 at the time. This was over five years ago. I was nearing the end of a relationship which had taken a turn for the worst. A girl I had loved and been gentle with since the beginning, but now she was becoming obsessive. Sometimes violent with me? It came to the point where I was always in the wrong. Anyway, I was driving down a long stretch of road one day with her. She was going on and on at me about something and changing a song on the CD player because it reminded her of something bad and generally not shutting the fuck up, I snapped. I began to drive on the wrong side of the road and gradually began to speed up. At the time, I knew there was nothing coming the other way, but it was still a stupid thing to do. I started screaming at her, telling her to shut up. I didn't want to hear any more of her stupid fucking remarks anymore that she was a bitch and I'd kill us both if she carried on. Anyway, she shut up. But what the hell was I thinking? I was lying on my bed the other day, the image of that happening in my mind, and feeling depressed as fuck about it. I eventually snapped out of it, but it shows how far guilt is willing to follow you, even after five years. Account 7. My housemate decided she was letting these two 18-year-old guys stay at our house. She comes home early and turns her phone off. They come home later from their night out. 5 a.m. to be exact. 5 a.m., doorbell is ringing to fuck. Not a, it's late, so I'll ding it a few times, just fucking thronging of bells as one of these two dickheads mash the button. I am livid. My window is directly above the door. So I stick my head out and ask them what the fuck they are doing. They explain the situation. I tell them I'm not letting them in. I've never met these fuckers in my life. And to fuck off back to their own house or ring my housemate, not knowing she had turned it off. Ding dong motherfucker, skinny fat and freckles. Glasses are going mad on the bell again. My heartbeat is through the roof and I'm storming the stairs like it's D-Day. And a German fucked my wife. These two guys are stood looking straight up at where they think my head's going to pop out this window again. They freak when the door busts open to me, streaming a great plume of breath into the cold, into their faces. Because what they didn't see from just my head sticking out of the window is that I'm a 6'2". 2.30 LBs, broken-nosed, hairy-chested, weightlifting rugby player. I am wearing nothing but the tightest of briefs, and I'm shaking with anger as these two young bucks recoil, realizing that I'm not some rosier-cheeked friend of a friend, but a warrior woken long from slumber by errant fools. Who disturbs me in this late hour? I cry wildly to the night. The two taking steps back hurriedly. I advance. You think of me as your servant. Mine domain your own, to hush you into my keep after such treatment. Their voices quiver in disbelief as I grasp their throats with large, rough hands. They wanted into this house. Now all they do is plead for me to let them leave. Addendum, the end never happened. The first half of this is actually true. And I basically opened the door on these kids, threatened to break one of their arms, and they ran away and then apologized through my housemate the next day. I just kind of got bored and started making shit up that sounded fun. Account 8. When I went to public school, this kid from my class kept annoying me, slightly bullying, but nothing major. But it just kept building up, and he got more and more on my nerves. He was a pretty annoying kid, and I wasn't his only target. Then one day after school, when we were in club, it's a place most kids go after school at that age, until their parents come home. You just hang out and play and such. I had built this awesome sand castle, and I was kind of proud of the fucking thing. Guess who shows up? The annoying jackass, and he promptly destroys it. That was the final straw, and I decided that I've had it with his shit. So I went full-on psycho, mode, tackled the dude. He was a large, fat kid. I was a skinny kid. Then firmly placed my hands on his neck, strangling the bastard. I kept going for a long time, could see the blood rushing to his face, but he couldn't get me off, nor was anyone trying to help him or pry me off. I decided to stop before he passed out, though, ran out of the club and went home. The next day he came up to me and apologized for his behavior. I was rarely bothered again. Only happened one other time by another kid from another class. I promptly proceeded to beat the kid up and spit in his face before things escalated. TLDR, don't fucking mess with my sandcastles. Account 9. I'll do it in short. I box since I was 6. When I was 18, I beat up a guy so that he can only see 20. 
on his left eye, has epilepsy, walks with a cane, and has only four of his real teeth still in his mouth, I broke his jaw, his left eye socket, and seven of his ribs. Notice, I know him all my life. He's always been a prick and has always been violent with women, and this was not the first time he got beat up for it. He had a fight with his mother, beat up her and his little sister, went out, got drunk as fuck, and raped my best friend, breaking her jaw in the process. I sat 11 months in Lepoglava, Croatia. Google it, one of the Balkans' worst prisons, and he never sat a day in his life for the shit he did. And to all those people out there who hate me for it, I'd do it again. Account 10. I caught a guy trying to take my wallet that was sitting on the table next to me. I slammed his hand, and he let go. Then he tried to hit me. I caught the wrist of punch, and I pulled him into an arm lock. His arm was twisted behind his back, and he yelped in pain. Then I pushed his head into a nearby desk and pinned him there, like he was being arrested over a car. I told him that if I caught him trying to take another person's stuff again, I'd beat the shit out of him and call the cops. Then I craned him up and tossed him aside, where he knocked his knee against a table leg and ran away. My friends saw the whole thing and think I'm an amazing badass. The truth is, I just didn't want him to see some of the embarrassing stuff in my wallet. Account 11. This was the first fight ever got into. This happened back in junior year of high school. I was walking back from lunch with my friends, and there was this one kid who I just didn't like. Tried to act tough all the time. Huge ego. Never knew when to shut up, etc. We were walking, and out of nowhere, he tries to throw a snack-sized Lay's potato chip bag at me. Empty. Wind came by, and it hit him straight in the face. By coincidence, I also had an empty bag and rolled it up. Walked in front of him and gently let go, and it hit him in the face. At this point, he's furious, and we were just walking up the portable classroom ramp to get to class, and all I remember is him throwing a punch at me. I dodge it, and my immediate reaction was to throw one back, and he gets knocked to the ground. I think it's over, my heart racing, hoping no school officials saw it. And this guy gets up and take a fucking brisk can and tries to slam it into my face. Now I'm thinking, dear God, he's fighting dirty now, and dodge again, throw a punch, and this time we're inside the portable classroom. At this point I'm thinking, there is no way he's going to try anything, the teacher is 20 feet away, but to my amazement he gets back up, I think, okay, what can I do to stop him but not hurt him? He's charging at me. I grabbed both of his shoulders and yelled, I just knocked you down twice. What makes you think you have a chance this time? He sits down. I sit down. He gets up five minutes into class. Doesn't come back until the last ten minutes. Looking like hell. Face kind of swollen. And I get a congratulations from the teacher. I also broke the bone right beneath my pinky on my right hand. I'll post pictures if this gains enough interest. TLDR. Punched it twice. Yelled at him to make him have an epiphany and broke a bone in my hand. Account 12. When I was 21, I was a student sharing a large house with six other guys. Many evenings, a few of us would gather in the living room and play board games or card games on the floor. Most of the guys were good people. Though I shared the top story of the house with the one asshole in the bunch. He never paid his share of the utilities. He made a point of playing bad music very loud on mornings he suspected anyone else of being hung over. He never knocked before barging through anyone else's closed door, even though he became irate if someone entered his room without permission, etc. Fortunately, he was also a twerp in every sense of the word. Not a medical dwarf, but far smaller than any of the rest of us. We were all actors to some degree, and he briefly held down an announcer's job at the radio station, where I did the same thing while trying to argue for some new interpretation of the rules to a game we had played dozens of times before. He took to yelling. I guess he thought he could intimidate the rest of us into simply agreeing to give him a huge advantage. I patiently let him shout in my face for a good minute or two. Then I literally sat on my hands before leaning toward him and demonstrating what a full-sized set of pipes sounds like at top volume. Between the fact that I continued to argue against him, and the way my voice dramatically exceeded his best efforts at being loud, something snapped, his little hands were on my throat, squeezing hard. Even if I wasn't near death's door, I knew long-term damage could be done if he kept applying pressure where his thumbs were bearing down. 
Yet my hands were not readily available for retaliation. I did the only thing I could think to do, roll backwards while kicking out with my legs. Because the wee tyrant kept his grip on my throat for much of this roll, the extension of my legs caught him in the chest or stomach. In the next instant he was flying up and away, still rotating a little from the shared roll as well. In comical fashion, with his feet toward ceiling and his head near the floor, he smashed into a wall 2030, away. It was probably my adrenaline distorting time. But it really seemed like he clung to the wall for a moment before sliding down and bonking his head on the floor. Having ripped his shirt in the process of launching him away from me, the little jerk had the temerity to start talking about cops and lawsuits as he rose to his feet and started back toward me. Fortunately, there were at least four witnesses who saw that I only made one hostile move, and that was after his grip was firm on my throat, I was tempted to mock him. But he looked too pathetic being restrained by our mutual friends and ranting about my unprovoked attack. I haven't been in anything resembling a physical fight since that evening. Yet I was both relieved and a little proud that this profoundly obnoxious guy was uncharacteristically polite and deferential to me whenever our paths crossed after that night, TLDR. While arguing about the rules of a board game, a housemate of mine actually tried to strangle me. I was sitting on my hands to make clear I intended no physical harm, so I could only dislodge him by rolling away and kicking. The end result was a comical human catapult that sent him into the far wall of a large room. Account 13. Female here. I was at a dance in college with some of my girl, friends just having a good time. I had a guy come up to me and just started grinding on me. I politely and verbally declined, but he wouldn't back off. So I just shouted over the music, I've got a dick. Dude instantly backed off, mission accomplished. Account 14. I was at our town's yearly festival and was there with my neighbor. We were there as friends and nothing more. I overhear these kids that pass by and say, wow, he's with her, inside. I just blew up. I cannot stand when people make judgmental statements or talk down to anybody. I turn around and ask, what was that? One of the kids says, why are you with her? Is she fucking you? About half a second after he said that I lunge at him and punch him as hard as I could, down. On the ground with his hands over his nose, his friends ran after I hit him, I lean over and say, Never! Will you judge or say anything about her again? He got up and went over to the porta potty to clean up, which isn't a good place to wash anyways. I apologized to her and we enjoyed the rest of our night. Account 50. Now is my time to shine. I had an apartment really close to the bar. It was a Friday night and I had just worked 60 hours that week and was not interested in going out. My cousin, on the other hand, was dead set on going out to the bar that night and wanted me to go with him. I respectfully declined many times, but he was persistent. About 20 minutes after I finished telling him no on the phone, I hear a knock at my door. Now, to describe my apartment. The staircase went up the outside of the building with all the door accessible from the stairs. There were no hallways or none of that. My front door led right outside. So I answer the door. It's my cousin and his friend. They're begging me to come out to the bar with them. I keep telling them no and eventually they leave. I watch TV for a bit then head to bed. End of story, right? Wrong. I wake up suddenly to voices yelling and counting down from three. My bedroom is right next to the front door, so I can always hear drunk people hanging out outside, still half asleep. And I don't really know what's going on. Then they get to one, and I hear this huge bang. Sounded like someone blew something up. It's about 3 a.m. I jump out of bed, awake as fuck, and open my bedroom door. It's my cousin and his friend, and they have just booted open my front door. I was livid. I grabbed my cousin by his throat and threw him outside. I was going to knock both of them out right then. But my cousin's friend told me to calm down, and they backed away slowly. Up the stairs, I thought. Why the fuck are they going upstairs? Well, apparently my upstairs neighbor was having a party. And when my drunk cousin and his drunk friend came to wake me up, they went up to my neighbor's house to party and tried to impress some girls by kicking in my front door. I've never been so mad in my life. I was pacing back and forth with clenched fists and swearing. 
contemplating what to do next. I was going to call the cops, but it was family. So after about two hours, I calmed down enough to go to bed. Morning comes and I get a chance to look at damage. The whole frame of the door exploded off the wall and the door was unable to lock or fully shut it. I drove over to my cousin's house, got his sorry ass out of bed and told him to fix my door. Unsuccessful, of course. Eventually a maintenance guy came and had to replace the whole door and frame. Part 3. Account 1. I don't really know how scary I was, but it is definitely a story that makes me feel like a badass. I was out at the bars and this drunk asshole knocks into me. He mumbled something and walks away. I didn't really care because he was drunk. Well, next thing I know, he is back and trying to apologize for bumping into me, which consisted of him grabbing my ass. My response was to grab his wrist with a death grip, force him backwards, and tell him, if you touch me again, I will break your fucking hand. Understand and repeat that until I get a head nod of acknowledgement, this all coming from my 5'2", self. TLDR drunk guy gropes me and I threaten to break his hand. No white man. Account 2. On my way home from work one night, I'm a chef. It was 1.30 a.m. Came to A, T intersection. With a stop sign on the road that shoots off, I had no stop sign. This high school girl was texting and ran the sign. Came out right in front of me. I hit the horn and slammed on my brakes. She also slammed on her brakes. Both of us are stopped. Me inches from her driver's side door. Her window was open. Phone still in hand. I got out of my car, walked up to her car. She was shaking. I didn't say a word. Stared at her for about 10 seconds, then quickly reached in and grabbed her phone from her hand. She flinched, thinking I was going to hit her. I smashed her phone on the ground, reached in again, and took the keys out of the ignition. Threw them as far as I could, still silent. I got back in my car, backed up a bit, and slowly drove around her while staring at her. She had tears in her eyes. She deserved it. Later I found out. She is a friend of a friend's daughter. Someone actually told me the story about how their friend's daughter was put in her place about two weeks after the incident. She snuck out and took her parents' car without permission. She had to call her parents and explain what happened that night as she couldn't find her keys. She was supposed to get that car for her birthday. This was three years ago. She still has no car, and her parents, who eventually were introduced to me after I admitted it was me, thanked me. I still love seeing her reaction when I rang the doorbell and she answered the door. She is still terrified of me. I'm six foot tall and have a mean beard, not the friendliest looking fellow. I am proud. I have more brutal stories of the few bar fights I've been in, but this is so personal as I stop by and have a beer with her dad once in a while now that we know each other and I can still see the fear in her eyes every time. Account three. My wife was bitching at me. See, I got into some questionable stuff. She thought I was way over my head. She comes up to me in the bedroom and just goes off on me. I get right in her face and yell, you clearly don't know who you're talking to. So let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skylar. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot. And you think that of me? No, I am the one who knocks. Account four, took my friend let's call her Mary, to a party a while back because she wanted to go but didn't really know very many people there. She starts talking to this guy, let's call him Rick, and they get really close, sharing a chair, talking really close to each other, etc. They might have made out at that party, I don't know. Anyway, they exchange numbers, and then I take her back to her house and crash on the couch. This guy is big, 6'4", a bodybuilder, long flowing hair. He could be a model. Explains why she was attracted to him. I'm not very big. 5'8", on a good day, stocky, etc. Turns out the guy is one of those people who relies on looks alone to get girls in bed with him. He's also one of those guys who gets really aggressive when you rebuke him. She tells me a day or two later that he has no personality, so I figure that's that. A week or so later, I'm at a bar with one of my high school friends, and I see him there with his friend. Don't really know the guy, so I don't acknowledge his presence. I get a text from Mary saying, what the fuck? Rick sent me this text and then follows it up with a screenshot of their conversation. Basically, he said, look like your friend so, and so hooks up with bar sluts. She responds with, what are you talking about? Then he proceeds to call her a dirty whore and a bitch, etc.
My best friend and I go up to Frank and Faggot and call him out on it. He instantly folds like a napkin, saying he was sorry and wouldn't do it again. Half an hour later, I get another screenshot from Mary, seeing that he was back at his old game. Later that night, I send him a Facebook message saying that if he did it again, I'd stomp his dick in the dirt. He brags about it on Twitter and Facebook, saying, pussy, and that Mary is a dirty slut. Mary is super sweet, super nice, etc. She's like my little sister. It is on. So later the next week, I see him again at a bar while I'm with Mary. I told Mary not to approach him, and if Rick said anything to her, I would give him the aforementioned dick in the dirt treatment. I step out for a cigarette, and when I come back, Mary is crying. I instantly knew what was up. So I see Rick sitting on some bleachers. The bar was also a concert hall near the stage, chatting up some girls. I run up on him, grab the little shit by his hair, and hold his head down to the bleacher behind him, then scream in his ear, if you so much as look at her funny, I will end you again, he holds like a napkin, slam his head into the bleacher and walk off. Justice is served, and it was dished out by a man who is almost a foot shorter than that prick. Mary and her friends have a good time, and I look like the hero, yay me. Finally, the bar closes, and I'm outside with Mary and her friends. Mary's friend, let's call her Tina, is chatting with Frank and Fucker's friend. When Frank and Fucker rolls up to pick him up, I don't acknowledge his presence, because I already told him once he's in the passenger seat and starts talking shit on me from the car. I calmly put out my cigarette then reach for the door handle of the car. He locks it. So I reach through the back window and grab him by his nappy hair one more time. That time, I believe I pulled a chunk of it out. My initial plan was to pull him out of the car and stomp him, but that didn't work so well. He rolls up the window and cries like a bitch. No more than three minutes later, he pulls the same thing. With my left hand, I grab him by the collar of his shirt. With my right hand, I'm actively reaching in the car to unlock the door. At that point, the driver of the car speeds off, leaving their friend at the bar. I look at my hand. There's a large chunk of his T-shirt in my clenched fist. Haven't had trouble with him since. TLDR. Some huge dude starts saying harassing stuff to a girl who was basically my little sister. I told him if he didn't stop, I'd put his dick in the dirt. He didn't stop, so I put his dick in the dirt three times in the same night. Account 5. It was my 21st birthday. About halfway through the night, this guy shows up that I found fucking irritating beyond belief, but I could tolerate his presence. He was not only uninvited, but told not to come by me. When I see he shows up with some mutual friends, I think, are you serious, fuck it? I'm not going to disturb the peace. Everybody's having a good time. About an hour passes and I hear yelling outside. I look out the kitchen window and this fucking guy and a couple female friends of mine are yelling at each other. Naturally, I went outside to go find out what the hell is going on. I separated them and asked each of their stories and found out that my two female friends were pouring out a beer for our buddy that died of diabetic causes a few years back. Some of their beer, I guess, had splashed onto uninvited guy's shoes and he started having a shit fit. What the fuck, you got beer on my fucking shoes, was his reaction. My friends explained what they were doing and he said, fuck dead friend's name and fuck diabetes. I told him he needed to get fuck out now. He starts saying he needs to find his glasses because he dropped them on the ground. So I wait about 30 seconds before I start screaming inches from this guy's face that he needs to fuck off before he gets fucking hurt. And that he did not want to fuck me, etc., etc. In hindsight, it was extremely over, macho, but I'm a former Marine and that stuff slips out from time to time. And there's not much I can do about it. Anyway, he stands up straight looks me in the eye, smirks and says, fuck you skull full of bong hits. I grabbed him by the throat and slammed the back of his head into the side of my house a bunch of times. I was seeing red. I started punching as hard as I could into his gut and grabbed him by the head and threw him into the house, at which point six of my friends jumped him until he got carried out. Needless to say, the party went on and everybody had great night, except uninvited guy TLDR. Guy shows up uninvited and told not to come to my birthday, talks shit about my dead friend, 
Disrespects friends at party. I went berserk. Dude had to be carried out. Could have killed him. Edit. I am not proud of what I have done to this guy. He overreacted harder than I ever have in my life. Account 6. Back when I was in high school, there was this guy who I'll call Travis. Travis liked to act gay to piss people off. He used to always rub up against people, talk about anal all the time, and come to think of it, he probably is gay and was using it as a cover. Anyway, one day him and his friend were going around harassing people like usual, and they came up to me and started rubbing my chest. I told them to back off, and when they didn't, I stood up straight, looked him right in the eye and said with a serious tone, Please, leave me alone. They stopped. All was well. Not five minutes later, they decided they needed to. Get me. Travis, friend, came up behind, grabbed and held my arms while Travis rubbed his crotch on my leg and pretended to hump me and scream and moan loudly. This made me snap, and I wanted to kill this guy. Now, I've never been in a fight in my life, and I have never been involved with any kind of boxing or form of exotic combat practice, I'm six foot, 70 kilogram skinny guy with glasses and apparently I activated my hidden ninja mode. I slipped out of the arm bind with ease and lunged towards Travis, put an arm around his chest, wrapped my foot behind his legs and pushed my shoulder into him, instantly knocking him on his ass. I fell with him because he wrapped his arms around me as he fell and my glasses went flying off. I was still on top, so I flung my arm back really far in an attempt to wind up a massive punch. I made a fist and threw all of my energy into this one punch aimed for his ugly face. There would have been at least 12 other people, friends of ours, all knew both of us, sitting around and watching with disbelief, all of them completely shocked at the scene that was unfolding in front of them. It was lucky that Travis, friend, didn't join in the shocked crowd because I don't know what I was capable of. I wanted blood. His friend had run over in time and grabbed my arms, holding me back once again and prevented me from ever throwing a punch. A teacher came running over screaming at us and I calmly got up, picked up my glasses, put them on and said to the teacher, It's fine. We're just playing. With a huge grin on my face, I think that moment secured my title as Don't Fuck With That Nerd for the rest of my high school life. Account 7. Senior year in high school, I was taking a shower after football practice. I was the too cool kid. That was above the annoying HS scene because I was dating a college girl and that clearly made me superior. So I'm lathering up minding my own business when I see a junior cornering a freshman between a row of lockers and giving him some pretty brutal slaps to the freshman's bare skin, like leaving big red handprints on the kid's back for no apparent reason. The freshman was pretty annoying most of the time. But I could see that he was starting to crack, and despite trying to play it off like a joke, it was obviously both painful and embarrassing. So anyway, I decide to get all tough about it, because I have quite the mean streak of my own, and I figure if anyone needs some bullying, it's this bully, I say. That's enough, nothing, just more joking and harsh slaps. I say one more time, I'm not fucking kidding, knock it off, he responds. What the fuck are you going to do about it? I'm still covered head to toe in soap bubbles, but I lose my shit and bolt straight for him. He sees I'm not kidding and runs straight out of the locker room. When I catch up to him, I bear tackle him in the hallway, still covered in soap. From either the fear of me kicking the shit out of him, the fact I was super soapy, or the sheer gayness of being naked tackled caused him to give up, and he took his retribution slapped to the face like a champ. Account 8 Bar fight a few years ago, not to toot my own horn, but my dad boxed and taught me and my older brother to box when we were younger, and boxed with my older bro five years older, until he moved out, so I can hold my own in a fight, even though I'm a small guy, around five, eight foot. A friend of many people at the bar had died the day before. Everyone went to the bar to commiserate, I suppose. The guy who passed away died of a drug overdose. He had people who knew him and were friends. And then he had his other friend. A brawl broke out seemingly randomly between a small group of non-drug-related friends and drug friends. Bouncer got jumped by three, four guys and all hell broke loose. I beat the ever-living hell out of one of the guys that jumped the bouncer. Wife, then Jeff, had to pull me off. She said I probably would have killed him. 
Liquor, high emotions, groups of people butting heads as a recipe for disaster. Haven't been back to that bar since. Took me a while to realize how savage I had become in that 30 second span. It's mostly just a blur. From what I have witnessed though, once tempers and emotions get high, inhibitions are nearly gone, and we revert back to something nearly sub-human. Account 9. What's funny is that I was just telling this story to my boyfriend last night after keeping it a secret. So I was in the middle of having a verbal disagreement with my former best friend. She was black. This will make sense if you keep reading. In the middle of a parking lot, things got really bad, and she ended up bitch slapping me in the face. And at that point I was like, okay, you need to get the fuck out of my car right now. So out she goes and proceeds to toss a bunch of my shit out of my car on her way out. Just my luck. Some really big black chick sees what happens and automatically takes her side and just starts screaming at me about how I need to get my ass beat. All the while she is strutting towards me and I just knew shit was about to get really ugly really quickly. I'd never been in a fight before, but I acted quick and pulled out a butcher's knife I had in the side compartment of my door. I worked in a really bad neighborhood and almost got kidnapped, raped twice, waved it out in plain fucking sight for her and all the other bystanders to see, and screamed at the top of my lungs, Do you want me to fuck with this? Don't test me! In sort of a screaming, hissy, almost basilisk-sounding-like voice, she and a few other people ran away in terror, and I got back into my car with my heart pounding and feeling quite crazy. Account 10. I was visiting home, and my father came up to my younger sister and told her to please do the dishes. He said it very politely, and that he had asked her to do it 15 minutes earlier, and she still hadn't done it. My sister got pissed. She started back talking, swearing at him, and in general telling him to fuck off. Nobody talks to my father like that. When he left the room, I told my sister not to speak to our father like that. She fucking exploded, screaming at me that I didn't know anything about her life, that I was a whore, a cunt, and bitch, etc. Then she started to come at me with her fists raised. Now my little sister is blonde, 16 years old, about 5'2", and 130 pounds, I'll be 21 in a month, have lived in the city for the past year, I'm 5'9", and about 150 pounds, to say this was an unfair advantage would be true. She comes at me and is about to swing. And when she starts to punch me, I literally grab her fist. It was like a movie moment. I paused, let it sink into her that I had her clearly overpowered, and smirked. She went ballistic. She started clawing at my face and pulling my hair, general girl, fighting techniques. I swept her legs out from under her and slammed her face into the ground. Her lip and nose were bleeding, and I sat on top of her, pinning her arms and legs down, and told her I wouldn't let her up until she had calmed down. I slapped her face whenever she called me a dirty name. Stupid whore, slap, fucking bitch, slap. She eventually calmed down, but it took a few more slaps until I released her. I count 11. I was sitting in the passenger seat of my buddy's car, drunk off my ass, and waiting to order a motherfucking McChicken. Well, here I am, hungry, drunk, and sort of sleepy. Three guys who I have never met open the passenger door and pull me out. Two guys were holding me against the car while the third guy punched me repeatedly in the face. It took about five punches to realize what the hell was happening. Soon as I realized what is happening and that I have blood literally everywhere, I started laughing maniacally. Think Walt White in the crawl space. The guy punching me asked what the hell was so funny, and I said, there are three of you little bitches and you pussies can't even break my nose. And I spit a mouthful of blood in his face. He backed up, punched me in the face again, and they took off. I went running after the guy punching me. I grabbed the back of his neck, getting a hold of his necklace, choking him with it while I told him if I ever saw him again, I would disembowel him in front of his mother. I walked back to the car and yelled at my buddy for not helping me. He said it looked like I had it under control. The thing about this is that I scared myself. I'm five comma six and totally reserved in my actions. And here I am getting the shit kicked out of me. And all I can think to do is laugh and spit blood in someone's face. I had to go to my desk job the next day looking like shit and with a still bloody nose. Account 12. 
I went away to school and got a totally crap roommate. She convinced everyone that I was clinically insane, had spent time in a mental hospital, had violent delusions, etc. Meanwhile, I was medicated for depression and panic attacks, and not violent at all. I was sick of meeting seemingly nice people, having them back away metaphorically and literally once they found out I was that crazy girl. One day I was in the elevator and two girls were talking about me. They were talking about me and how crazy I was. I had literally never seen either of these girls in my life. It made me so angry that these two girls could talk about me like garbage, but even more so that they could do that right in front of me because we'd never met. I decided right then and there that I would be the lunatic they wanted me to be. I walked over to the button panel and I casually dropped my student ID. When they both bent down to pick it up, I pressed all the floors on the elevator and stared straight ahead. By the time the first girl had picked up my ID, seen who I was, this maniacal villain, and tentatively tried to return my ID, I was reaching into my bag, probably for my notebook. I hadn't thought that far ahead. Luckily, these girls were so scared, I didn't have to think anything more than that. The elevator went ding, and they went running leaving my ID on the floor and a grin on my psychotic face. Later that month, other people started talking to me, like I was a human being, and treating me like a classmate and not someone who was just released from death row. They slowly started to realize that I was just as crazy as everyone else, and that my roommate was kind of pathological. Eventually, it became a fun party game for me to scare the living fuck out of those few holdouts who really just wanted to believe in the killer girl in their dorm, everyone save the victims, really enjoyed my Shakespearean performances. Account 13. Good chance to get buried. But here it goes. One time, this buddy of mine calls me up out of the blue to tell me his kid was falling in with a lame crowd. Apparently, he was going through the whole goth phase. My friend decides it would be a good idea to try and join in to creep the kid out and do the whole... I think it's cool too thing to snap the kid out of it. It wasn't going as well as he wanted and needed a dude used to creepy stuff to step in. The kid was meeting some of his little goth friends in a cemetery that night. Cliché. And I was told to meet them there. I hid behind a gravestone until I was introduced with a big two dude. Then I popped out. I stood there, naked, with my bits tucked between my legs and gave the kids this thousand-foot stare. I mustered up a piercing falsetto and said something creepy in a sing-songy voice about cutting myself, then slowly dragged a razor across my chest. As the first few drops of my blood fell, the kids took off. Nothing really came of it. The kid cut that goth crap out pretty quick. My buddy played golf with the police chief in town so we didn't get in trouble for the corruption of minor fit. Good times. Account 14. I had an abusive boyfriend who was really awful to me, mentally and physically. One day he was sleeping, and I stood over him with a cast iron pan, honestly considering bashing his shitty stupid skull in. I moved out instead, but thinking back on it makes me feel sick. He beat the shit out of me, but I just couldn't do it. Account 15. I must have been barely 14 when at a theme park. On one of those crappy ghost cart rides at the very end, one of the employees jumps out with a scream mask on. Now, I can't remember if I was scared or just sheerly disappointed with the ride, but I socked the dude right in the OL, scream hole, and he fell off the cart. Apart from the bleeding nose and the threatening to tell my parents, I think he took it in good humor. Part four. Account one. When I was a camp counselor, I was the youngest of the counselors, and the kids knew they had a certain amount they could get away with with me. The kids decided to throw some small pebbles at me. One of the other kids told me the plan right before I walked out into the open, so I wasn't surprised. Well, when they started, I was annoyed and all but not mad. Until one hit me in the temple, not hard enough to break skin, but still jarring. So I ran after the ringleader. I should probably mention that I was holding a baseball bat at the time. And after I cornered him, he was still laughing because he knew I wouldn't hurt him or anything. I just said, you're done. You are out of camp. The blood drained from his face so fast that he began to plead with me. Now I had no power to kick him out. 
but he didn't know that. And after a little begging, I let him off with a warning, TLDR, scared the shit out of a kid because he hit me with a pebble. Account two. In my senior year of high school, I shared a physics class with a majority of jocks and stoners. Some of the football and soccer players were friendly and others were all ego. One particular stoner, Eric, always said anything he felt would piss someone off and was asking for his ass to be handed to him. For our three-day lab on velocity, my physics teacher gave us metal carts no larger than Tonka trucks, which he hand assembled and explained that everyone would take turns rolling the carts down a two-by-four with weights in the back. One person would hold up the two-by-four while another let the cart go and two groupmates would be responsible to catch it. He paired the class into groups of five, and much to my misfortune, Eric and three of his friends ended up in my group. Surprisingly, Eric's friends were happier than clams that this was the only work we had to do to earn an A. The first two days were spent gathering information and making a spreadsheet, all of which Eric spent sleeping or sneak texting. I thought making him feel included would encourage him to work, but after failed attempts, I let it be since we weren't experimenting yet. At least there were three other able-bodied people helping. Big mistake. On day three, our teacher gave a cart to each group and begged us not to let the cart hit the ground. On the first trial, I was holding the two by four and Eric was supposed to let the cart roll down, but he dropped it on the ground. Our teacher shot us a look, but Eric thought it was funny. So he began dropping the weights on the floor and tapping the two by four against the lab table. I was sick of asking him to help us. So I took the two by four out of his hand and he yelled, what the hell was that for? I replied, you're annoying, that's what. As I set up the next time trial, as I let the cart go, Everything seemed to happen in slow motion, as Eric let the two-by-four fall and the cart flipped and crashed into a desk. My teacher's face turned crimson and any patience I had left vanished. I remember hearing Eric mocking, what? Are you going to cry? Oh my God, I think she's going to cry. All of a sudden, this voice that to this day was not my own screamed, I'm not going to cry. I'm going to wring your fucking neck. The entire class was staring at me in silence and my group members, Eric included, were backing away. Adrenaline took over, and I didn't care who helped finish the lab. After that incident, Eric never spoke another word to me the entire year. Account three. Mid to late 90s, ninth grade, I was an asshole. A lot worse than I am now. Well, more overt. Bullying, for a vast majority of reasons, was rampant through my high school. And I found that being a homeschooled kid with little filter and sarcasm tended to get punches thrown quickly. I am and was accustomed to fighting and at that point had spent five to six years in different martial arts in an attempt to gain discipline for a temper problem. It worked, just not until after I had kids. The worst bully we will call Macho Kid for his constant references to Macho Man Randy Savage. He even has a yellow bandana. It was awesome. He had a crew of generally spineless goblins following him around that would throw things, swear at his target, generally parrot anything he'd said. I'd earned his ire for being different. Long hair, boots, button-up shirts, and an army surplus rucksack. Also, homeschooled and hated sports. Also, 5'4 and 92 pounds. Yeah. I had a gathered group of friends who were all other nerds. Bookworms, band geeks, and drama kids. We sat at a table in the back of the cafeteria and tried to ignore everyone. I got into lots of fights, lots of stupid fights. A macho kid comes in, spots me, and brings his crew over to throw insults. I continue eating and reading. The rest of my friends begin to shift and figure out a different place to go. A friend of mine, she's cute, mousy, glasses, plays the flute, and is in the drama club. She didn't have a chance, poor Samantha, but I digress. She stands up, macho. Kid shoves her back in her seat by her shoulder and says, sit down, you little bitch. And she does. I'll admit I had a temper problem, but I handled this with the utmost rationality. I threw my foot across the table and into the wall. I stepped up onto the bench that was attached to the cafeteria tables. I began stomping towards him and began saying, what? very softly and slowly got louder until I started screaming it at him. 
Everyone started to bolt, but I somehow locked Macho, kid into a mind battle, because I was looking right into his eyes, screaming at him, until he broke into tears and ran away from me. He wasn't a bully for a solid month after that, avoided everyone. Samantha didn't talk to me, ever again, and I spent the rest of that year in peace, no more fighting, and graduated that year. It was a good thing. Account full, not me, but a friend. He was walking home late one night, alone and drunk, when six guys came up to him, trying to jump him. He swung at the first one with his bricks for hands and dropped him cold. Spinning, he caught another right in the jaw, making him collapse, two down. The next guy tried to swing, but he ducked, avoided the punch, and caught him with a wicked uppercut. The guy wasn't quite out, but another hook left him motionless. Three down. Guy number four came at him, but was quickly silenced by a punch combo as guy five ran off. Guy six, realizing he was fucked, picked up a section of two by four. My buddy looked him dead in the eye and said, You've got one shot, then I'm going to fucking kill you. In the manliest voice he had, Kid dropped the two by four and took off running. Sounds fake, but it was confirmed by others that saw what happened from afar. This guy is no fucking joke. Account five. I am way too late for this. But I scared myself when this happened. I am an Asian kid. I was sophomore in high school in a very, very losing wrestling team. I was at a wrestling meet with this school that was known for being rich and douchey. The entire time I was getting warmed up for my match. The guy I was supposed to wrestle was obnoxiously yelling to my side about how pathetic it was that our school had to send an Asian to represent them on my weight class and making fun about how the only thing I should be doing is helping my broke. Dad run a coin laundry store. I kept my cool when we meet at the middle of the mat to shake hands. He comes to me and pulls my strap around the shoulder and lets go of it to make a slap sound. He turns around to do the are you not entertained gesture and tries to shake my right hand with his left hand. As we awkwardly shake hands, he says loudly with an Asian accent. Freeze go very, very easy on me. I lost it when the match began. I went for the fastest move I can pull, cowcatcher, and pinned him. He struggled, as did I. I inched my fist closer and closer to his chest. I could hear him choking, but I wanted to teach him a lesson, which is when I acted the scariest I've ever seen myself. I whispered in his ear. If you don't tap out, I will kill you. He tapped out. He had bloody lips. I shook his right hand with my left. He was the only one on his team who lost to our high school. It felt good, TLDR. Instead of yelling at a racist punk, I whispered in his ear that I will kill him. Account 6. I'd been a useless friend, zoned forever alone heartbreak in my final year of high school. Friend zoned myself, probably, in retrospect, and had this secret crush on this girl for two years. Anyway, college comes around, and I'm trying to forget about it. I get so good at it that my mind literally blocks her out of view. She just kind of washes into the background. So as I'm doing my best to deal with this weirdly intense and long heartbreak, apparently it finally comes out among my high school mates that I'd had a thing for her. A few people bring it up, but somehow I act nonchalant and learn how to ignore it or change the subject. Except Derek. Derek had physics class with me, and he'd bring her up almost every time we talked or rode the bus together. This happened for about three months straight, and I'd politely acknowledged his statements and dodged his questions with no problem. I'd finally become consciously aware that he was doing it. And in doing so, it made me remember her more, and so I started noticing her around campus more. And I didn't know how I felt about it. So it was completely out of the blue, I mean, I'd given this no thought at all, that as we were on one of those old buses with the weak doors and it was heading into a long, sweeping right-hand turn, that Derek brought her up again. If you ever mention her again, I'm going to throw you off the, the bus. I was completely detached at that moment. It was like watching someone do it in third person. I was so casual about how I said it, I didn't even stare him down. My eyes wandered around like I was making idle conversation. Just scanning the moving scenery, Derek went white and didn't say a thing. I approached him in the coming weeks like nothing happened. 
He no longer had anything to say to me. I still have no idea where that came from. Account seven. In ninth grade, there was this bully. He was your average meat, head bully. The kind you knew was going nowhere in life. I felt like I could have kicked his ass, but never did because I didn't want to get in trouble. My public school had a zero tolerance policy. As a kid with aspirations for higher education, I didn't think it'd be worth it. Anyway, one day, it was just him and me in the locker room. Everyone else had cleared out. He kept slamming my locker over and over just as I'd open it. I thought he'd get bored, but he didn't. After about the 19th time he'd slammed my locker, I told him to fucking cut that shit out. He shoved me and shouted, What are you gonna do? Hit me and oh! For a moment, I thought I would. I'm short, but not weak. I wanted to just floor him so badly, but I didn't. Instead, I jammed my head against the locker, cutting just underneath my eye. He looked at me in disbelief. I simply walked outside the locker room and let the teachers and such look at my bleeding face. They knew what kind of kid the bully was. I never even had to say a word. The look on his crying face when he was telling them truth. Ah, uh, can't describe how satisfying it was to watch him burn. Kid ended up kicked out of school for that delicious TLDR. I slammed my face against a locker to get a bully in trouble. Account eight. I had been in this college for about two years without ever getting mad. I don't get mad easily and tend to let my friends do things that annoy me a little to avoid confrontation. However, one of my friends was taking this to a new level and deliberately fucking with me because he thought it was funny. So I'm driving him and two other of my friends on a weekend night about 10 p.m. to go get pizzas. He's trolling me, doing things that I hate, like pretending to be stupid and misquoting facts and criticizing my driving. About 10 minutes into it, on the way back to campus, I fucking lose it. I swerve off the road into an empty parking lot, set the brake, turn around to the back seat and just yell at him with all my might about how he's an immature fuckwad and how I put up with him, do things for him, etc., etc. And he's being a douchebag, it lasts maybe a full minute, and I end it with, get out. He got out of the car and I left him, I came back for him after circling the block and he's always been nicer to me. Account 9. Several occasions. First, I was probably 13 or 14, and I was hanging out with this kid who was the older brother of one of my friends. The three of us always kicked it together since I was in third grade. As we were neighborhood chums, they moved in across the street from me at that time, and we were like three siblings from then until I finished high school. Anyway, I was hanging out with the older of the two guys, and he was three years older than myself. He was being a dick, like older brothers sometimes are, and harassing me a, a bit, getting kind of rough, typical older brother shit. We were at one of his friend's houses, who I knew through him, and we were in his basement. He had this wooden practice katana, and I lost my shit and got fed up with the bullshit, snatched it up from wherever it was laying, and backed this kid into a corner, making quick little fainting swings at him while getting the crazy eyes on him. Eventually, he was sitting in a corner, calmly asking me to chill and saying we were cool. I held the wooden sword with a really wide grip and just jabbed the fuck out of his shins with the pointed end. Another time, I was hanging out with the same kid, about the same time frame, and we were walking in the rain through his friend's neighborhood, same one of his friends as mentioned above, and some other neighborhood kids who we didn't know but who were between the two of us in age were decking around in the rainstorm. It was one of those storms where there's no lightning or anything and it's reasonably warm out still, but the rain is pouring. No wind really, but just soaking everything. We were both pretty much entirely soaked from head to toe, having been playing outside and walking around in the woods between the neighborhoods and the undeveloped lots and stuff. As we walked past these kids, one of them had a shoe or a bucket or something, and had filled it with water from the creek and threw it on me, I was already soaking wet. But the idea that you would do that to somebody you didn't know pissed me off beyond any sort of calm state of reason. And I spun around on this kid, not even sure who it was. And by the time I had done a 180 degree turn, I had a knife out and pointed at him. The fuck do you idiots want? They recoiled and made the most pathetic wincing noise I've ever heard. 
motherfuckers ain't got no respect for anybody. Account 10. A girl I used to live with as a friend, no more, was assaulted with a knife in her apartment by her ex. I was waiting outside. Since she had told me that the guy was violent and had struck her before on more than one occasion, I thought it would be safe for her. I see the guy enter, and about ten sec later, I hear my friend screaming for help at the top of her lungs that he has pulled a knife on her. I ran upstairs as quick as I could, and in this time I put my leather gloves on. As I was unarmed, I remembered that I had bought a small stone statue that day that was in my right jacket pocket. It would have to do as a last resort if needed, but I sure was hoping that it wasn't going to be necessary. By the time I get into the kitchen of her place, she is huddled up in a little heap in the corner, most likely scared shitless of this guy, and he is standing over her with a six, seven inch kitchen knife. He sees me enter with the gloves on, hands raised up for defense, and every now and then feeling my right jacket pocket for a good grip on the statue if needed. He saw that I wasn't someone he could intimidate in that situation. So after some words back and forth, he ran off and left the knife on his way. He was arrested the following day when he tried to come back to the apartment. The guy was a bit shorter than me, but outweighed me by at least 15, 20 kilograms. She was a tiny 5'2 or 5'3 or something, gal. I'm so pissed at these chicken shit guys that can be all mean and scary towards a small young woman, but even with a big knife won't go for the guy who's 6'4". Her mother wanted to put me in the papers for saving her daughter, but that publicity wouldn't have helped anyone. I am happy that I did what I did, though, and no one got hurt, which is the most important thing. Account 11. I was at a party when some younger guy decided it was time to spray everyone with beer from a shaken up beer bottle. I became aware of him when the sleeve of my shirt got soaked, at which point I wheeled towards him and screamed, stop doing that, stop doing that, stop doing that, emphasizing my point with a thrusting finger. He froze, and the entire party came to a screeching halt. Realizing that I had stopped the party, I waited a week before busting a move and dancing away. Everyone immediately forgot the hostility and got back to party. And later on, the beer guy apologized to me, and we smoothed everything over. Account 12. I was at my apartment early one morning, getting prepared to go into work. My friend, names changed to protect the innocent. Jennifer called me. It was strange, because we worked at the same place, but different shifts, and 8 a.m. was usually still sleepy time for her. She was in tears. Her boyfriend had woken her up on this day, her 20th birthday, to inform her that he had lied about having a job for the past few months and had been using her half of the rent money to buy and consume cocaine, he had also been hiding the notices that said they were late on rent. That particular morning, there was a note on the door that he could not hide. This was the last day of their eviction process, and they had three hours to vacate the premises. She told me all this in tears, with Zach the boyfriend screaming in the background, I was enraged. Jen was one of my best friends, and no one should be treated the way she was. I proceeded to go to their apartment. When I arrived, the note was still taped to their door, and inside I could hear Zach screaming and ranting, trying to make it sound as if it were somehow her fault that this was happening. I didn't even try the lock. My steel-toed boot crashed into their shitty apartment door, tearing part of the frame from the wall and sending the door flying wide open. Zach was facing away from me in the hallway, yelling at Jen about how she couldn't leave. With the door open, he turned to look at me as I regained my balance and barreled towards him full force. He barely had time to say, what the... before my right hand connected with his face in an open palm slap that sent him to the floor. I am a rather large man, and Zach, well, he wasn't, but I had no respect for him prior to this event, and knowing what he had been doing fueled my hatred to a level I had not and have not since experienced. His defense from my first attack was to lay on the floor, looking at me with wide-eyed confusion. I put my knees onto his shoulders and began hitting his face, fists pummeling him with hammer blows and punches. Every so often he would start to say something. And when he did, I hit him purposefully in the teeth, smashing his mouth apart. I do not know what happened around me at this point, 
My anger had become so directed, so pure, that nothing seemed to exist outside of me and him, locked in a one-sided combat that would assuredly end in his death. I wanted him to die. I do not know for how long I continued this assault. He eventually fell unconscious from repeated blows to the head, but still I kept going. Never in my life have I experienced such a pure hatred for another human being. Apparently, Jen called my friend Stephen, who was staying at my apartment at the time. Suddenly, I was off of Zack, and everything snapped back into focus. Stephen, all 290-pound bowling ball of him, had rushed in and shoved me off of Zack. I looked up at him, confused as to where he had come from, and looked back at Zack. His face, my gods, his face. I crushed his orbital sockets. Teeth and blood were everywhere, including in both my hands. When my senses returned, I began to feel the pain shooting from them, and realized that I had not only broken both my hands in several places, but had lacerations from pieces of tooth that were still sticking in them. Zack was unrecognizable. His face was a bloody pulp, in the very literal sense of the term. His breathing was erratic, and when he breathed out, he would cough and spit blood. As it finally dawned on me what exactly I had done, we fled. Stephen hopped in his car and I into mine. Jen called me a few weeks later. Zack did not remember who had assaulted him and said he had no desire to press charges. This was due to him having a whole lot of cocaine on his person at the time it happened. Police assumed it was drug-related violence. And Jen was not arguing the point. He had to have his face surgically reconstructed. I went home and dug teeth out of my hands with tweezers and soaked them in alcohol. That was almost unbearable, but I didn't have to go to the hospital. I still have some trouble with my left hand hurting sometimes. And I think it was from breaking them on that day. TLDR, I beat a man so badly that he had to have his face reconstructed, and if it wasn't for a friend showing up, I would have beaten him to death. Account 13. I was walking my usual route to work and passed a homeless guy begging for money. He seemed a little hyper but pretty normal, all things considered. I had my headphones in and just ignored him when he came up to me. I walked nearly a full block and felt someone lightly shove me in the back. I turned around and it was the same homeless guy who apparently followed me. I thought I heard some talking or shouting but it wasn't clear through my headphones. He took an aggressive stance, and I thought about some advice that my cousin gave me. Always throw the first punch, so I did. It's the first and only time I've ever punched anyone. He fell backwards and skittered away. It took a few hours for my hands to stop shaking. Such a strange feeling for me. Account 14. A buddy of mine had some beef with a guy who jumped him. This asshat just walked up to him while he was on a park bench. Sucker punched him in the back of the head, then got face to face with my friend as the asshat rummaged through his pockets. Fast forward two weeks, buddy at party, sees guy, buddy carries gun now. He unloads the gun quietly and walks up to the guy. Pistol whips him right in the jaw and puts the gun in his mouth as asshat lays on the floor. Says, guess what, I remember. And pulls the trigger, guy shits and pisses and starts crying. Gun was not loaded, remember? I miss my buddy. He moved out of state a year later, makes about 90K, though. He's a financial planner. Account 50. One time, when I was 16, my boyfriend's ex was harassing me. I had never met her as she went to the Catholic school. And they broke up eight months prior after a three-month relationship. And she had a new boyfriend. I guess she was still hung up on my boyfriend. She's calling my house, even saying shit to my little brother saying racist shit about me being a pinche guerra, calling me white trash. So it doesn't end. And I decided to go talk to her. I called her, asked her to meet me at the park near her house. Just talk it out, no fight. She finally arrives, and she doesn't want to talk. She wants to talk shit. I make some comment about how my boyfriend doesn't care that his skinny girlfriend doesn't have fat tits because I have a sweet ass, and K the attack on me, she starts this windmill action and I'm blocking everything. I see an opening and I connect a right hook to her temple. I drop her. She falls like a tranquilized, domesticated animal. She's on the ground and I have fucking character, so I don't hit her. I yell, get the fuck up. I'm not done. 
So she gets up and pepper sprays me. It was in her pocket and I never saw it. It gets in my right eye, mouth, all over my shoulder. It doesn't stop me, I rage. I pulled out my spiked wristband, put it across my knuckles and yell, you want to fight dirty? You want this shit? And I rush her. She bolts and I chase her all the way to her front door. The stupid part is that half the pepper spray got all over her. It was super windy outside. TLDR I won. She got zero hits in and pepper sprayed herself as much as she pepper sprayed me. Part 5. Account 1. When I was a senior in high school, my little brother was in sixth grade. During football season, he had to ride the bus home from school instead of riding with me because I had practice and my parents didn't want him hanging around the school waiting for me. One day I get home, and he is acting kind of strange, and I notice a red mark on his cheek after some convincing. He tells me that some high school kid had hit him and was messing with him in general since the school year had started. He didn't know his name, so I told him to find out the next day. The next day, he tells me the kid's name. I have no idea. So I start asking some of the sophomores on the football team who he is. Well, word gets around the locker room what happened to my little brother. Now all the guys want a piece of the action. I don't want to hurt the kid, just scare him a lot. So with a group of about seven, eight football players behind me, I confront the kid and in so many words tell him that if he ever even looks at my little brother again, I will end him. Word quickly spread. Everyone knew who my brother was and that you stayed away from him. Account two. I was out running this summer and got hit by a car that blew a stop sign. I dove onto the hood and rolled off as he came to a stop. With no hesitation, I got up and kicked his grill in. I went to town on it. American history. Ex-curb stomped the shit out of it. He got out and asked if I, he should call an ambulance. I yelled, yeah, for you, motherfucker, you're going to need it. I looked over and I saw his wife and son in complete shock. I felt like a dick. I ran another two miles. I couldn't walk the next day. Account three. I got into an argument with an acquaintance at a fair-sized gathering. His name was Alex, and he was with a friend. Don't remember his name. Call him Bill. I'm pretty quick-tempered, but I usually manage to keep myself under control. I threatened to choke him, he said. You don't have the balls. Bill did this retarded grin and nod thing. Not a second after he had finished the sentence, I gripped his neck and choked him till he passed out. Account four. Last night, an ex-girlfriend was over, she was going to stay over, ended up getting mad and decided she wanted to leave. Said something and I got really angry, opened up the door, pushed her out and slammed the door shut. This wasn't enough though. We had just bought a pizza, had maybe three slices. I grabbed it, opened up the door and threw it down the stairs. Still in the box, I guess it hit her. She started to cry and left. I sat on my bed, happy for a few seconds. Now you're just as pissed as me, was all I could think. Five seconds later, I felt awful. Walked downstairs, cleaned up the pizza sauce, and dip all over the place and chucked out the pizza. Crazy bread was still good, though. It was delicious. Account 5. I was once held at syringe point. The person simply walked up and held the syringe in my face and said, Give me your wallet or I'll stab you. My reaction was both a moment of epic stupidity coupled with total badassery because I said to him, you'd best kill me on the spot with that syringe. If you don't, I will wholesale fuck you up. I stepped back, then throw my wallet at him and he dropped the syringe. So I reached out and grabbed him by his fringe and drove my knee into his face, which dropped him. Once I worked out, he was breathing. I put him in the recovery position and walked away. I remember shaking for hours afterwards. I had four or five panic attacks during the following month. Account six. I was super drunk and sitting at a bar. I finished my beer and drunkenly threw the bottle behind me. It smashed right next to some guy who then violently approached me and said, Hey man, did you throw that fucking bottle at me? I said drunkenly. Yeah, I did. He goes, I'm gonna fucking kick your ass. I screamed back. Oh yeah, cause I'm gonna jerk you off. That's right. Take that fat cock out and let me jerk you off. He sits stunned. Then the whole bar started chanting, Jerk him off, jerk him off, jerk him off, the guy said. You're a freak, man. And walked out of the bar. It was a pretty solid night. Account 7. 
about 20 minutes into a rugby match last year, and there was this one girl who was firing off racist insults towards my team. And I, now this girl, was very full of herself. The whole smirk over the shoulder at you, walk with her chin in the air sort of thing. If that wasn't enough to piss everyone off, she decided she was going to scream like a banshee whenever anyone rapped her for a tackle. No idea why. She was just one of those people you really want to slap with a fish covered in thumbtacks. Anyways, whenever this girl got tackled, she would wait a while before releasing the ball when she was on the ground instead of almost immediately like you were supposed to. The ref was flat out ignoring it and I was getting pissed off. So next time she got tackled and refused to release the ball, I simply leaned over, looked her in the eyes, and screamed in my best, I'm a scary rugby chick voice, give me the motherfucking ball. Now, apparently, a skinny blonde girl in a scrum cap and a mouth guard screaming at her was enough to, for her to flip shit. Imagine deer in the headlights while getting electrocuted and launch the ball straight into my open arms. Needless to say, she wouldn't make eye contact with me for the rest of the game. TLDR scared the shit out of a bitch during a rugby game because she was getting on everyone's nerves. Account 8. Not really scary, but OP's story reminded me of it. When I was in high, a Hispanic kid got in my face and started calling me a faggot and saying, What you gonna do about it, faggot? I licked from the tip of his nose up to the bridge. We were face to face and whispered, You ever had your shit pushed in by a big old white boy before with a smirk on my face? He went ghost white and never bothered me again, TLDR, licked and threatened to rape a kid who tried fighting me. Account 9. I have a cousin who used to answer his door when JWs would ring in his own individualistic manner. Now keep in mind, he was 5'6", 230 LBS, most of it beard. He would answer dressed only in his whitey tighties, with a joint in one hand, a beer in the other, and say, what the fuck do you want? They eventually avoided his house entirely. Account 10. I was hanging out with some friends in town when a guy walked past and called me something like fucking emo whore. I was 15, 16 at the time, and I was used to comments like that because even if I wasn't emo, I still dressed differently and had black hair. This time I just snapped. I stopped, started walking towards him yelling, hey, what the fuck did you just call me? And then I spat him in the face. Then I just walked back to my friends that looked kind of chalked but impressed. I had to sit down. Too much adrenaline. Ten minutes later, the dude comes back. With 20 fucking friends, I start to panic on the inside. It's just me, my then boyfriend, and lady friend. Like, what the fuck should we do at this point? Anyway, the guy I spat in his ugly face started harassing me again and told me to show him my arm to see if I had any scars. I was in fact a cutter at that point in my life so was about to show him my scar-free arm instead. Just as I was about to show it, I snapped again and jumped the guy and just started hitting him and screaming like a mad person. He freaked out because that was probably not what he was expecting from a 5'1 short emo girl. Him and his friends left us alone after this. I have never done anything like this since that. Now I only use my words instead of my spitting fists. Account 11. I was in 6th or 7th grade, kid in my gym class started calling me a fag repeatedly for no reason. This went on for a few weeks. Finally I decided to tell him that I'd had enough, and told him if he called me a fag one more time he would regret it. So of course he called me a fag again, and I punched him in the stomach so hard he fell to the ground and started crying. The second he hit the ground, I jumped on him UFC style and started punching the shit out of his head. He was just screaming, I'm sorry, and bleeding profusely from his nose. I couldn't stop myself, though. A couple of kids pulled me off of him, and I eventually chilled out and walked away. To this day, I feel horrible about it. A few days later, he stopped going to our school. The rumor was that his mother caught him parading around his house in her dirty underwear and was sent to some sort of group boy's home. Account 12. Someone stole a few things from a C-130 during the constitutional referendum in Iraq. I was working security. The SSGT in charge of us told us, I'm going to jack this guy up. Make sure nothing goes wrong. So he beat the shit out of this guy, accused him of being a sadrist, and cuffed him before taking him to detention. We stood there and pointed our guns at people and told them they would die if they moved. 
That was basically the worst thing I ever did to another person. I pointed a loaded M16A2 at someone and told them they would die. The scary part was, I wasn't joking. Account 13. After my freshman year of college, I opted to move into a house with two buddies for the summer, my other option being to move back in with my parents in the small rural community I grew up in, the type of place where people don't lock their doors, everyone knows everyone, etc. The city where my college is has a fair amount of crime. Went to a big state school, something I really knew nothing about, having been conditioned to trust people and not anticipate crime. So one night about 10 p.m. I decided to make a Walmart run for some groceries. Strange, I know, but it seemed like a bright idea to this 19-year-old. I would generally park my Jeep Cherokee in our drive behind the house, just off the back porch, which was fairly lit. So I yelled to my roommates, hey, heading out to Walmart, be right back, and continued out the back door, stepped off my back porch, took the 10 steps to my Jeep, and got my keys handy to unlock the driver's side door. Suddenly the door pops open just as I approach to unlock it. A guy I've never seen before jumps out, holding my new CD player, shit was MP3 capable, which was baller at the time, in one hand and a flathead screwdriver about 18 inches long in the other, I was kind of in shock. It didn't immediately register with me what was going on, and so I just kind of froze. After a second or two, I was between him and his escape route. It hits me what's going on, and I say to him, just drop it, which he responded to by attempting to stab me with the screwdriver. Both of us are now in attack stances about three FT from each other when he whipped the screwdriver at me, hit me in the face, and took off running into the night. CD player still in hand. I chase after him. I was a three-sport HS athlete in collegiate WR, yelling, I'll fucking kill you racist expletive. As I started to gain steps on him, I'm not a racist person at all. Blind rage completely took over, and I said what I thought would hit the hardest. Five blocks of pursuit, and I'm closing in on him. I'm about 30 feet away from him, my screams becoming increasingly primal, crazy. He ran, turned left, and I decided to cut the corner of the block and run behind the house on the corner. Ran into an 8 f tall chain-link fence. He got away. I yelled out like Keanu Reeves when Schweizer got away in point break. If I had a gun, I would have fired a clip into the air, I'm sure. Had I caught up to him, it would have been a fight to the death. I turned back to go home and call the cops, exhausted, and realize I'm in the seediest, worst neighborhood I've ever seen. I'm missing a shoe, bleeding from my right cheek and still clutching my car keys. Called the cops who brought dogs and traced my pursuit, trying to pick up his scent, but no luck. Got robbed, almost got stabbed. Went into a six-block sprint of lunacy, spewing racism through the hood. Account 14. There was this kid. He was a regular douche nozzle. The kind of guy you want to beat severely with a blunt instrument. He decides one day, Hey, I'm going to go after this faggot. Me and his faggot boyfriend. My faggot boyfriend. My boyfriend's words, not mine. So in the park, we're sitting there, chilling and being ambiguously homosexual by holding hands on a motherfucking park bench. And he speeds in on his little, mommy and daddy bought this for me so I would shut the fuck up before they chainsawed me to pieces and buried me next to the shed. Trick butt. He comes racing around a curve and tail whips my boyfriend's brand new mountain bike. We were 16. It was a big deal. Well, no sir, I thought. Not to fucking day. I chased his ass down on foot. He turned around to be all threatening. Now keep this in mind. I am trans, male to female, but I am not a weak woman. I work out. I'm a fighter. He's screaming in my face. I grab his handlebars and lift him and his little bike off the ground and slam him back down in a feat of pure rage-fueled adrenal fuckery, shutting him up. His fat fuck of a hillbilly inbred cousin decides, it's time to grab me. My boyfriend ends that plan fast with a swift punch to his already ugly nose. I stare him dead in the eye. Listen to me, lad. Ever touch me. My things, him or his things again, I will dismantle you. They will never find all of the pieces. I do what I want. Wrong answer. I was pissed, 
I was livid, I am lucky I didn't commit homicide, and or be awarded a medal for a service to the human race. I flipped his twiggy ass off his bike, lifted it over my head, and threw it 30 feet into a pond. He made a move towards me, and I gave him a look my boyfriend later described as a glare that made my spine go cold and my heart skip a beat. You could literally see in your eyes that if he had made a move towards you, you were going to beat him to death and then perhaps eat his heart in front of his dying eyes. Please don't uh, ever look at me like that. Pissing myself sounds unpleasant. We went home and made cookies. TLDR dumbass decides to fuck with a trans woman and her admittedly flaggy boyfriend gets his bike in a pond and the death stare to end all death stares. Account 50. I was in southern Thailand traveling with two mates last summer. We were in a small town for just one night and managed to find the tourist hotel where most western travelers would go to. For some reason, I just couldn't sleep that night, and my friends had fallen asleep hours ago. At about 2 a.m., I heard some weird noises outside our door, and my initial thoughts weren't that it was people having sex. But after I snuck out the door to investigate, sure enough, people were definitely having sex. What sounding like just round the corner? It was a dark and still night, but the moon was out, and my eyes could adjust after a short while. It was actually down this corridor. And in the bathroom, the building echoed due to the concrete surfaces, quite creepy at night. So I snuck into the men's toilets, showers, and they were going at it on and off in the first cubicle on the right, in the row of five. I noticed two bare feet sticking out the bottom in a weird angle, and so I really couldn't visualize the way in which they were doing it. But anyway, I was a meter away from the door, and my heart was pounding. What would I do if the door suddenly opened? Before thinking about it much, I made a snap decision I was going to fuck around a bit. They were rustling around, but it wasn't loud enough for them to be having sex at that moment, so I assumed they were fingering or something. I inhaled a long breath slowly through my nose, then exhaled. They stopped what they were doing. It could have been by coincidence, but I knew they had hurt me. With my right hand, I snatched one of their ankles. They were both screaming, the door was rattling, and as I let go, I heard them whimpering, climb up onto the toilet seat. I had even scared myself at how evil I was preying upon their fear. But it felt good. They were quiet now, and I walked down the corridor of cubicles silently into the communal showers which no light could reach. I waited a very long fifteen minutes before I heard them move again. They assumed I had left and the door slowly opened with a head poking out to check it was clear. Guy, then girl, one after the other they tipped, towed out, holding their clothes. They had only put their underwear on by the looks of it. Just as the girl glanced round to look down the dark corridor, I walked towards her, chin down, looking right at her. Never have I seen a look of pure white fear come across a person's face like this. She let out a spine-shivering scream as she dropped everything and ran for the door. I could hear them both still screaming as they reached the door to their room and locked it. I creeped back to my room, stuck under the duvet, and fell asleep. Part 6. Account 1. I was on a road trip with the family. We stopped at a gas station, and my mother decided to go to the bathroom. I waited in the car for a while, and then decided that I should probably go as well. Walked over to the bathrooms into a small waiting area, and stood there waiting. Now, there were two bathrooms, one normal and one for disabled people. Both were occupied, so I stood waiting outside the one that was not designated for disabled persons. Having waited a couple of minutes, I started getting bored, wondering what took my mother so long. And since things were starting to get a little desperate, I decided to get my revenge on her by ambushing her once she walked out of the door. This might sound a bit odd, but I was quite young at the time, 13, and my family used to do stupid shit to each other. A moment later, I heard a flushing sound. So I stopped to the side, getting a perfect angle for the ambush. As the door slowly opened, as in slow motion, I jumped right in front of the opening, roaring furiously. The old man who emerged seemed to almost faint with shock, shrinking back towards the opposite wall as he slowly inched his way out, looking at me as if I was some kind of rabid animal. 
He then threw open the door and ran to his car, driving away. Account 2. Ooh, I have a good one. This is a single isolated incident from my childhood, and fortunately wasn't an early sign of sociopathy or anything like that. I grew up on a small farm with a brother three to five years older than me. He was always really nice to me, except when our parents' friends came over and brought their son, who was also three to five years older than me. They would pick on me mercilessly together, trick me into touching the electric fence, push me off the trampoline, play hide-and-seek and leave me hidden forever, all the typical bullshit. Well, one day, something that fuckhead kid did sent me over the edge. The only logical solution my six-year-old mind came up with was to hit him in the head with a sledgehammer. So here I am, trying to keep from falling over this hammer is so big. In comparison to me, I raise that motherfucker over my head and prepare to deliver the blow to the back of his head, as fate would have it. My brother saw what was happening and yelled, Douchebag kid, look out! It felt like slow motion. The hammer was in full arc. Couldn't have stopped it if I wanted to. And this kid whipped around just in time to take a sledgehammer to the face. My dad then picked me up by my head and smashed my face into an unlit grill. I didn't get him too hard, though he did need to go to the hospital. Just a few stitches, I think. Kid never fucked with me again, though, Ed. TLDR hit childhood bully in the face with sledgehammer. My dad picked me up and slammed my face off a grill. Account 3. I'm a metalhead in high school. And I go to a high school flooded with preps who look down on anyone not rich. I am a pretty blunt and short-tempered guy. Anyways, last week in Spanish class, this prep started say I was a child molesting Satanist. Of course I was. What the fuck in my head? because it's a horrible lie that is just flat out fucked up and ridiculous. So he moves to the seat behind me and asks me how many kids I've violated. I turn around and look him dead in the eye and tell him, listen here, motherfucker, you think I'm a molesting Satanist? I'll show you molesting Satanist. I will fucking stab you before I violate you and spill your blood in the name of the true God, Satan. Now I'm an atheist. I'm a straight male. And I'm fairly quiet unless spoken to or pissed off. This kid freaked out, told the teacher. And I got three days of sack. The preps haven't bothered me or my friends since. Apparently I'm the scary motherfucker in school now. My friend even spread the rumor that I stabbed someone for taking my food at lunch in my old school. I can't believe this actually worked, but it did. Account full. My first summer job was washing and cleaning airplanes at my local airport. My boss was a nasty Scottish man who would constantly pick on me because I was the youngest girl on the team. One night after a particular busy shift of planes landing and taking off, we had a hectic rush of turnarounds to do. A turnaround is when a plane lands, all the passengers get off, we clean it quickly, and a load of new passengers would board. So we waited at the bottom of the steps ready to board this one plane. It was an Airbus A320. I was on the piggy vacuum. A vacuum which is carried like a rucksack on your back, and you basically plug into the galley power and race down the aisle, hoovering up all the crumbs in between the seats. Underneath and onto of the seats, a proper vacuuming should take around 15-20 minuets. But the no one air hostess insisted that we didn't need to do a deep clean and that she needed to turn the plane round in 10 minutes or they would miss their departure slot. She told me to whiz down the aisle and just get the bits I could see, so I did. She was happy and was just about to sign off on the job, and then the nasty Bosman comes along and grabs me by my ear and tugs me down the plane, pointing out what a shit job I had done. The stewardess was like, it's fine. Just get off my plane. I'm happy. Goodbye. The nasty boss made me reclean the entire plane. The stewardess was then screaming at me to hurry up. My boss was shouting. I had loads of pressure on me. And then I noticed a busload of passengers waiting to come up the steps to board the plane. I finished. And the bosman swore at me and called me stupid before he started walking down the steps himself. I don't know to this day what made me kick him in the back of his head, but I did and he fell down the steps and landed unconscious on the tarmac at the bottom. My colleagues stood there open-mouthed. The stewardess stood there open-mouthed, and 150 passengers stood there open-mouthed. The, 
plane didn't depart for over an hour. I walked back to my scooter and rode home. Don't know what happened to him, don't care. Never have I ever reacted that way since. TLDR kicked my nasty boss down the steps of a plane before takeoff, knocking him unconscious. Account 5. When my grandmother and I had to take my mom to the ER after her excessive drug abuse and threatening to kill herself, I was so angry with my mom at that point, I just wanted to get her to the hospital and be done with it. I wanted to be able to tell the doctors exactly what drugs she was on, so I went through her stuff, found some pill bottles. But then I saw a Ziploc bag filled with tan brown powder. She had a heroin addiction before, so I yelled at her, asking if it was heroin, calling her pathetic for getting back on it, etc. She then whispered it was my dad's ashes. I didn't even feel bad because I was so angry. But looking back, I get very scared of how little I cared. Account 6. Two Halloweens passed. I was at a college park dressed as Link. It was really fun, it was a big party, but everyone knew each other and whatnot. My girlfriend was dressed as Zelda. Well, this guy showed up that no one knew. And he was hitting really hard and unacceptably on all the women and creeping them out and making everyone uncomfortable. He even hit on my girlfriend, even though I introduced her as my girlfriend. So after a bit, me and some other guys pulled him aside and talked to him. Just told him to cool it off and maybe make him realize what he is doing and he can stay. It's cool. Just stop being a creep. Be appropriate. About a half hour later, he grabbed the ass of the hostess of the party. She is a friend of mine who I have known since fourth grade. That pissed me off and she was yelling at him and he wouldn't leave. So I grabbed him by the back of the collar and roughly guided him down the stairs to the lawn and shoved him away and told him to leave. He still wouldn't and then got in my face. So I shoved him away again and started to walk away. Well, he came at me again, so I ran right at him and pulled my wooden sword I made and came at him with it full charge. He ran away like a bitch. It was kind of funny, too, because he was dressed as a devil, so it was like fighting Ganon, but more of a pussy. Account 7. I was walking along a quiet road in the city, back to my car, and a guy stepped in front of me with a knife and told me to give him a wallet. I uppercutted him and he dropped. I could hear his teeth smash together when I made contact. He was pretty much unconscious when he hit the ground, just moaning. I took his wallet and rolled him into the recovery position and kept walking. Account 8. I was once visiting Amsterdam for a conference, and after the conference I stayed for two more days. When I was in a bar, a pretty lady approached me and we talked for a while. She offered me drink, and I later came to know she was a lady of the night. No problem. I went with it. But the drink I had was tasting funny, so I asked about it. She changed her demeanor completely, telling me how she hated Americans. And there was GHB, gamma, hydroxybutyrate. In the drink, I got mad, and I just went for her neck right then and there. People around S stopped me by force, and police were called. TLDR choked a hooker in Amsterdam for giving me a beer with GHB in it, just because she hates Americans. Account 9. This one time, when I was around 16, I went batshit crazy. A little backstory, I never knew my dad. And I had been sent away to a kind of boarding school that my mom really couldn't afford when I was seven. But it was a non-profit. So they took me anyways, they said, after having taken an initiation test the school did for all prospective students, that my overall score was the highest they had ever seen. The classes for the younger kids were done in groups of 15, 20 kids, so relatively small classes. In grade 7, you got a one-on-one -on -one mentor that would teach you all of your subjects. My mentor was a really great guy by the name of Ben. Ben and I became close friends throughout my school. He was the father I never had, but still, my mother was at home. I missed her tongue. So my then-girlfriend, future wife, decided to take a trip to the town I lived in as a little kid. It turns out my mom had married a farmer and moved from the tiny place we lived in. So I went out to the ranch that they now supposedly lived on. When I got there, her husband informed me she had been taken by the sand people. So I took a speeder and found their village, slaughtered them all. Not just the men, but the women and the children. 
I slaughtered them like animals. Shit. OP was asking for humans. Account 10. High school. Senior. Break up with girlfriend who you've dated since you were a sophomore. Both of you get back to dating other people. By the time homecoming week rolls along, one of the traditions of H.C. week is cross-dress day. Backstory complete. It's the day before cross-dressing day. And I decide, as this is my last, I'm going out with style. Be over at female friend's house. She's the only female who has my size clothes. We're the same height. Would have borrowed GFs, but she was quite a bit shorter than I. Picking out clothes, get a text from GF that she's going out with a group of friends for dinner. Cool. I finish picking out my outfit for the day and head back home. My phone rings. It's the GF. I'm expecting her to say that she's done eating. And on the way home, she's bawling her eyes out at a friend's house. My ex's current boyfriend decided to try to make a move on her. Her cornered her against a wall and tried to feel her up. She screamed and escaped. Now I'm triply pissed. Not only did he do the fucked up thing of trying to assault a female, but that female happened to be my current GF, and it also means he was cheating on my ex. Ex and I weren't on the best terms. But we still said hi every now and then. It's too late in the evening to do anything, but I'm pissed. I call up my best friend and my ex's best friend, male. We decide we'll go talk to this guy. And by talk, I mean... I wanted to beat the living hell out of him. I hardly sleep that night. But the fun begins in the morning. It's cross, dress day, female friend I borrowed clothes from, coming over to do my make up. I'm wearing a baby doll t-shirt, a skirt, long socks and flats, full on makeup. The other two guys who are helping me confront dress and heels, skinny jeans and spaghetti strap top. It's the mid 2000s. Skinny jeans aren't the norm for guys. Yet, we three meet in the parking lot. Cheater boy is there. He knows he's fucked, so he brought a back. Now, from the outside eye, it looks odd. One guy in jeans and t-shirts staring down three cross-dressers. Glorious sight to behold. From anywhere but inside the meeting. I can see him sweating. He's nervous. He knows what he's done, and he knows who I am. He's outnumbered and knows he can't take us all on at once. I slowly step forward. My eyes must have looked some kind of crazy. I know this because they hurt afterwards. We're on school grounds. So by now, people have began to gather to see what in the world is going on. By now, I'm in his face. Ever watch wrestling and see how close the guys get there? Just like that. He's gripping his bat, not sure if he's getting ready to swing or not. No taking chances. I grab his wrist and clench. Mind you, I'm about six inches taller than him, and he doesn't work out. I also have two years of age on him. Give me three seasons. I barely break out. What? He mutters. Give me three fucking reasons why I shouldn't break your arm and beat you with your own back. Tell me why I shouldn't beat you. Report you. End up in a cell with you beat you further. By now, I realize that with every word, I've tightened my grip on his wrist. He drops the bat out a combination of exhaustion and fear. He's been attempting to speak words, but can barely manage breathing. I can see tears begin to well up. It was my first time seeing fear in the eyes of another human being. Sadly, that did nothing to deter me and only fuel my dominance over the poor soul. Well... Gladiator was always one of my favorite movies. I imagined myself then in the ring. Maximus Decimus Meridius, letting my opponent know he fucked up. But his fear wouldn't subside. He only shriveled in stature. His fear only made him breathe less and trade sweat for pigment. Answer me, Kyle. My last words that morning. It was at this point where I realized I made a mistake. We're on school grounds. There are people watching. There are staff and faculty coming. They saved Kyle, those faculty members. I was suspended for a day for threatening another student. Kyle was taken to court over what he did to my current GF. Sure, he only did community service hours, as he technically didn't do anything, but I won that day, and it will always be remembered by others until the whispers and rumors stop, as the day some white kid nearly got the living hell beat out of him by an Asian cross-dressing dude. Account 11. Playing football in grade 9. 
I was chop blocked, blocked low during a drill by a fat grade 10. Being even half nimble, I easily hopped out of the way and proceeded to hold his helmet to the ground by the back while the drill continued. He began screaming bloody murder at me, even though what I was doing was legal. As the drill ended, I let him up. And he freaked. He ran at me saying, if that's legal, so is this. I stepped out of his way, grabbing his face mask and twisted him around and pushed him to the ground, jumping on him, pinning his arms with my legs. I flipped shit on him, screaming in his face and ending with a hard prank to the helmet and a punch to the chin. He learned not to fuck with me ever. Account 12. It was like fifth grade, and I was at my friend's house for his birthday, sleepover. There were two or three other kids, one of which being this crazy ADHD long-haired hippie dude who I actually still hang out with. Anyways, pizza, cake, all that stuff happens. And then we head up in the guy's attic to watch a movie or something. When it's over and we're all trying to sleep, the crazy hippie kid starts rolling around on top of us and yelling and just being an annoying, crazy fuck. He rolls back into the spot where he is supposed to be sleeping. But before he can roll back over us again, I jump out of my sleeping bag in tears and grabbed his neck. It wasn't about killing him. It was about sending a message, though. I subconsciously wanted to scare him so he wouldn't do it again. Anyways, I told him to stop or something and then laid back down and went to sleep, TLDR, nearly strangled someone in fifth grade, we're cool now. Account 13. I was fucking with my little brother's friends once when then we're all in the kitchen. I randomly took a knife from a drawer and said, you know I've committed every deadly sin except for one, and then pretended to throw the knife in their direction only for it to fly out of my hand and lodge itself in a wall next to one of their heads. They all ran, screaming for their lives, and I got in trouble for the wall. Totally worth it. Account 14. I, a 5-0 girl, got so pissed at a player on our high school football team for sexually harassing me that I slammed my car door open, knocking him to the ground in front of the majority of our senior class. Then, while putting my foot on his throat, I yelled, Not so fucking tough are you now, fat ass! and I spat on him. I felt like tearing his face off. He never harassed me again, and he lost 100 pounds shortly thereafter, so I felt like I did him a favor. Account 15. Went to bed early one night because I had an early morning the next day. It was earlier than I normally go to sleep, so I was tossing and turning. Can't sleep. Can't sleep. Can't sleep. Finally, I dose off after what feels like hours of trying to knock out. I was barely out and I start to hear crashing and banging coming from the street below. From my 3RD floor studio window, I could see three young guys, 18-20-ish, slowly making their way down my street to the bar a block away. They're yelling at each other, vandalizing cars, mailboxes, street signs, wandering in and out of traffic, causing cars to blow their horns. I look at my watch, and it's just after 1 and an a.m., tired of their shit, I yell from my window. Move on down the road. This is a residential neighborhood. Fuck you. Go to bed, asshole. Ha 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 ha, I reply. Gents, get the fuck out of here before you regret not leaving. Oh yeah, come down here and say that to our faces. Those were the magic words. Now, I'm normally not the confrontational type, so this was entirely out of character for me. But the lack of sleep and the bold-faced dare struck a chord with me. Shit had to be resolved. I threw on a pair of sweatpants, grabbed my keys, and go downstairs where they are waiting for me. They were not expecting me to be 6'7 and 260 LBs, and two of them start to apologize immediately. The third doesn't get a chance to speak. I walk straight toward him, grabbing him by the chest and shove him into traffic. He bumps off of a slowly passing car and tumbles to the ground, I turn to idiot, two grab his shoulders and swing him into jackass, three. At this point, guy, one is up and coming at me and goes for the spear. One big ol' has him run head first into a telephone pole and he knocks himself out. I walk over to dude, two and three and say, pick up your friend, it's time for bed. Not sure why I said that. I thought it was cool in the moment. I went back to bed and still couldn't sleep. My heart was racing. TLDR. Trying to sleep, three assholes making a lot of noise on the street below my window, 
start a fight, one kid knocks himself out, still couldn't sleep. Part 7 Account 1. I have a group of friends who are touring musicians that would stay with my husband and I when they came through our town. Apparently, they acquired a stalker along the way that followed them through Europe and continued to do so through their U.S. leg. She had apparently left her husband and family to do this. She had gotten really violent and would attack the main guy that she was obsessed with. They had left her picture with the door guy, so they would know not to let her in. They had taken out a restraining order in San Francisco, but couldn't get it served. Some weird time limit laws. I go out front of the bar to have a smoke and I see her dancing up the street. She's wearing gypsy-type clothing and sunglasses at night. Great. As I mentioned before, they are staying with us and she is now at the venue. I tried to talk to her and asked her why she was doing this. She just kept repeating, I'm in the band. That was the only thing she would say to me. She got real close to the door and the door guy wasn't being very observant. I could see this going south pretty quickly, so I called the cops and told them the situation. Once they arrived, they talked to her but couldn't really do anything. They told her to stay on the other side of the street from the bar. The guys finish their set and they are loading up. Well, guess who shows back up and starts walking towards the van? I cut her off before she could get there and stood in front of her. I told her, I think you should go now, very softly. She started blabbing the, I'm in the band, line again, and I became infuriated. Jaeger probably had something to do with this. I really didn't want this crazy bitch to know where we lived, nor did I want to go to jail for hitting her. My brain shrieked, you must out, crazy her lick her face so i grabbed her face in one hand and licked her from her chin to her forehead while she was in mid-sentence i once again quietly said you should go and pushed her away she ran and we weren't bothered again that evening the guys thought it was hilarious tldr out crazed a stalker by licking her face from chin to forehead account two before i start let me say that i am five nine around 140 pounds, and I am more in touch with my femme side than most guys at my college. Anyways, about a week into my freshman year, I started getting kind of verbally harassed by a bunch of the jocks. I let it go for a while. I was happy with who I was and really didn't give a fuck. Eventually, though, it got too much to bear, especially when I had a boyfriend and they started going after him. One night while I was walking about, Four of them saw me and started yelling some stupid shit. Insert gay slurs here. If it had been about me, I wouldn't have given a fuck. But talking shit about my guy was crossing the line. I walked straight up to them and told them to fuck off. And they tried to walk over me and keep laughing. But in the scariest psycho bitch's voice I could, I said, Listen to me when I'm fucking talking to you, you fucking cunt. I was wearing a ring with a larger stone. So when I backhand slapped the leader on the word cunt it tore a chunk out of his face i put my entire 140 lbs and all my rage into it he stood there bleeding and aghast i said that's right bitch and walked away and they haven't bothered us since tldr tiny flaming homo pimp slapped a wrestler account three i was very drunk at one of my own large college parties at my old house some random one-off douchebag runs into me and tells me to watch where I'm going. Through a combination of having a bad day, this being my house and having others egg me on, I ended up getting myself angry enough to throw this kid out. I'm a large fellow about 6'3 and 260 LBs. And this guy is around 5'11 and maybe 200 LBs. So I walk up to him from behind, grab his shoulder and spin him so he's facing me, he gets a what the fuck look on his face as I grab him by his neck and pick him up. It's in the backyard, so I walk him, dangling by his neck, to the gate exit and throw him out. Yelling and words were exchanged before he and his friends left tails between their legs. I still feel bad about it. He really didn't deserve anything more than a go fuck yourself, and I'm totally not a violent person. But such is life. I did end up running into one of his friends on campus and telling him to apologize for me. Who knows if that ever happened. Account 4. I'm a female martial artist, and I regularly deal with dumbass guys with no training who think they can beat me up because I'm a girl. 
But this one guy was the worst. It was a college class, so we had a huge range of skill levels. We were paired up, white belt noob vers, black belt me, and started sparring. At first he refused to hit me, weird misguided chivalry or whatever, but became visibly pissed when it became clear that I had no inhibitions about hitting him. He just started to glare and then started trying to hit me as hard as he could. When you spar, the general rule is light contact. But this dude, who was much bigger than me, was trying to knock me out. Of course, he had no training and I could see him coming from a mile away. I said something along the lines of, light contact, man, we're not boxing. And he made some joke about me being a little girl who couldn't fight a real man. So on his next big clumsy punch, I spun in and threw him across the room, followed him down and got him in an arm bar on the ground. He started cursing up a storm, bitch, cunt and so on, so I just kept applying pressure. I had him right before the point when I would have broken his arm. He started crying, and I laughed and called him a little girl before I let him go. The instructors kicked him out after. Nobody fucked with me after that, TLDR. White belt sexist douche cries from my badass black belt arm bar. Account 5. So I was at the airport and had left my jacket in the bathroom about 10 minutes earlier. I came in the room to find it was still hanging on the stall door. As I walked out of the bathroom, I noticed that it wasn't mine. Before I could turn around, I felt a man's arm around my neck and he kept yelling, You know what that is! And I could have sworn he was humping me. I squirmed away and as I ran, I looked back to find the man but ass naked with a little bit of shit hanging out of his ass. Account 6. I almost killed a guy for trying to rob my mom. We were waiting in line at a book signing or something she wanted to go to. As we were standing there, a guy came up and started talking to the person in front of us. I think the theft thing was a team deal. They got my mom talking and was asking her questions and all that. And as she started talking and getting into it, I saw his hand drift into her purse. In a split second, I grabbed him by the throat, threw him to the ground, and put him in a rear naked chokehold. He had my mom's wallet in hand. The people around us had to pull me off of him. I'm unsure how long I had been choking him, but it felt like forever and he was already knocked. Once I got off of him, I was still pissed as he laid there almost lifeless and slowly regaining consciousness. I had the strong urge to finish him by stomping his head in, though I didn't. Cops were called and the guy was taken to jail. After the whole ordeal, I had realized how savagely I had acted and I didn't feel bad. Account 7 I was on my motorcycle a few weeks back. When this soccer mom in her minivan pushed me off the road into a ditch, she saw what she did after, shrugged it off and kept driving. Saw her through her side, mirror. Bitch looked right at me as I struggled to keep the bike up. I pull myself together and get back on the road. Two, three minutes later, I get caught back up to her and she is still talking on her fucking phone. Insert rage face here. I pass her and give her the bird. About 30 seconds later, I come to a stop sign. Bitch nearly rear, ends me and skids, still talking on her phone. Something someone said on the other end of the line made her laugh. This sent me over the edge. I kick down my side stand, hop off my bike, and walk up to her window. At a four-way stop sign, mind you, cars on every side. She rolls down her window and tells the person on the other line to, Hold on a sec and proceeds to tell me, what the fuck are you doing? You are holding up traffic. I lost it. I reached into her window, grabbed her pretty iPhone in the pink case out of her hand, throw it as hard as I can at her front window, smashing it and the phone in the process, calmly walk back to my bike and proceed on with my day. Account eight. I was a lacrosse goalie in high school and I was pretty good, scary even though I was um, a 110 LB white girl from NH. Part of being goalie is being able to see the whole field and yell to my players things they can't see, need to do. So I'm really loud and raspy from yelling every day at this point. Anyway, so in girls, lax. Around the goal is a circle which no one is allowed in except for the goalie. This means not a step in. You can't reach your stick in, nothing. If the ball is inside the... Crease, it's mine. A girl on the opposing team decided once to ignore this rule, 
because the refs were like 100 and blind and went for a ball on the ground inside the crease at the same time as me, we both were trying to simultaneously get the ball with our sticks while stopping each other. And the whole time I was just yelling, crease, 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 trying to get her to stop or at least get the reef's attention to the violation. Finally, I lose it and just stand up to my full five, five, get right up in her face, as close as we can be without my helmet touching her eye cage and literally just fucking scream like a crazy person, get the fuck out of my crease. She's like a deer in the headlights because I've just gone full out Rambo on her ass. So she steps back and literally drops her stick. I realize what I've done and the little old lady ref just blows her whistle and says, crease violation, goalie's ball, and hands me the ball. My coach immediately called a timeout to check that I was okay. And she told me she thought I was going to eat the girl. Ha 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 ha. I still love it. I thought I'd be thrown out of the game for poor sportsmanship and the girls on the other team were calling me psycho bitch for the rest of the game. But it was worth it. TLDR, lax goalie, went full hulk on some girl because she was breaking a serious rule and the refs didn't notice. They finally noticed and didn't say anything about my freak out, just handled it like any other violation. Account 9. Re. Crazy I. I bartended for a couple years at a dive blues bar. Blue, collar, mostly middle-aged crowd, I think I only had to break up three or four things during the entire time I was there. What got me fired? During a show one night, some lady got really trashed and proceeded to get cut off. She did not like this. A fairly big guy, 6'4-ish, 230 LBs, decided he'd play white knight and screw with me while I'm still running the bar with a crowd of maybe 85 to 100. Lots of trash talk, lots of belligerence. I finally got irritated enough to run my mouth in return. I wish I knew what exactly I said, but he really didn't like it and threw a full pint glass at me, hitting me in the head. I do remember I saw red when I snapped, and telling my drunk doorman that when I came back in a minute that patron needed to be out of my bar or shit would get real. When I came back with a heavy cast iron mallet, he was still there. I believe the only reason I didn't kill him was his wife's intervention. Are you coming after my husband with a hammer? Yes, mom. He's a lot bigger than me, and I may have to remove him the hard way. Shit hit the fan. The coked up owner and the drunk doorman finally removed them. I lost my job because I wasn't remorseful in the slightest, and my friends called me Bricktop for a few months afterwards. Account 10. Flashback to high school. I am a 6'1", skinny as crap white boy. But I was wearing a punk rock jacket, skinny jeans, and British assault boots that day with a shaved head. I looked like a skinhead road warrior. Someone was fucking with my little friend. He's this small, skinny dude who is like 5'5", five, five, tall. Well, this guy stole his backpack, and he was chasing him to get it back, and the guy tripped. So my friend full-on kicked him in the chest while he was on the ground, grabbed his backpack, and starts walking back to our group of friends. Well, the only error was that the bully's friend saw him get whooped by my small friend, so they start laughing at the bully's expense, so then this fucker has to have vengeance right then and there, and he starts moving towards my little friend when I decide that enough is enough. He already got whooped, and he's not going to fuck with my friend anymore. I step in front of him and just stare at his face, an unspoken challenge in my unflinching gaze. The guy is a bit dumbfounded because in my leather jacket I actually look like a big scary guy. He starts talking all kinds of shit but refuses to put a hand on me. And finally his assault culminates in, I will spit on you. To which I stepped into a hard shove that almost knocked him over and just scream, then fucking do it, bitch. Then the principal yells at us from far away, you two stop. And we both walk away. That is as scary as I get. Account 11. I was going on holiday with my grandparents. My granddad struggles to walk far distances, so was in a wheelchair. For some crazy unbeknownst reason, a rough looking drunk woman started attacking him, ripped out his hearing aid, pulling his hair, scratching him, going crazy. So upon seeing this, whilst carrying my granddad's metal walking stick, started beating the shit out of her until security arrived and took her away. It was seven years ago, so I must have been 11 at the time. Account 12. Seeing another cigarette-related story reminded me of my story that happened about a month ago. Also, 
I'm not a violent man. Protective, yes. Violent, no. I go to a punk rock venue in my city quite frequently, the kind where the security is lax. But due to the dying scene, the patrons are usually a good crowd and refrain from causing problems for other showgoers, as well as act as a natural security measure against assholes that try to ruin a good show. I was at a show there towards the end of August. I had invited this lovely girl, let's call her Jen, to accompany me for an awesome night of good beer and good music. After a band finished playing their set, Jen and I stepped outside to the front of the venue for a cigarette and were joined by some other venue, goers, when an individual asked me if I could spare a smoke, I, of course, obliged. This, however, was merely a distraction, as he saw this as an opportunity to flick, whip his knife out, and cut the strap to Jen's canvas shoulder, bag, and make a break for it. Jen was upset. I was pissed. Thankful for us, the rest of the guys outside with us didn't let the scoundrel move five feet before he was surrounded by punks, spiked jackets and all, delivering both boot and fist to the unruly rat. I was standing at the outer ring of this circle, maybe throwing in a foot or two, but never really connecting. The larger gent next to me had his foot on the man's wrist that was holding the knife, and with a nod, assured me that I could have a go at the miscreant, the would be thief, looked up at me and stared as I put my lit cigarette out on his forehead. Jen and I have our third date next week. And the larger gent that helped us out is now the head of security at the venue. Account 13. I made a throwaway since this could technically get me in some pretty big trouble. I'm a very tiny girl. And I shit you not. Last spring after leaving a Reddit meetup, I had to take the train home. It's extremely late at night I'm walking alone. I know. And trains don't come as often. I get down to the bottom of the tunnels and nobody's down there except the four Brazilian guys. As I walked past them, I could hear they were saying something in Portuguese along the lines of, We'll get her. We'll get her. It's too late to notice. It's empty. Although I look purely Nordic, part of my family is also European Portuguese, and I heard a lot of it growing up. I started to fucking panic. I tried to look like I didn't notice, so I pretended to get my phone out of my bag, but I always kept a knife on me, even though I swore I could never do anything with it. It was early spring so long sleeves still apply. Now one came up to me on my left, two behind me, and one who stayed behind to watch for people. They started saying all these disgusting things to me in English, and one started touching me, telling me to talk dirty to him, when the one next to me grabbed my wrist and one started charging. I let out the knife I had slipped up my right sleeve and dug the shit out of it into the side of his thigh. He screamed and grabbed his leg, and I twisted it as hard as I could, and then he dropped to the ground. Here I was, holding this bloody little knife I took from my dad with my dress covered in someone else's blood. I turned around to see the two behind me had stopped running at me, and I don't know what it was, but my adrenaline was pumping so hard I yelled back in Portuguese, How fucking deep do you want it, baby? flailing the knife in a twisting gesture. They had no idea I had understood them earlier. They froze in disbelief. I heard a train coming, so I threw the knife into the bottom of my now-ruined bag, got on and left. I blankly stared at them in the window, pointing to them individually, mouthing one, two, to freak them out more while they grabbed their wounded friend. Nobody ever found out. The story never made the news. I left my knife in an enzyme wash at home in a bucket overnight, doused it in bleach and threw it in a swamp the next day. Account 14. When I was about eight, a friend of the family's then, four-year-old son decided it was a good idea to rip out a giant hank of my hair. As this was at my house and we were watching TV on my bed, my eight-year-old self decided that the next perfectly sensible course of action would be to smother that little fucker with my pillow. Luckily for him, the door was open and my mother saw what I was doing and managed to stop me. If no one had been there, I probably would have killed him. I still haven't forgiven him for pulling my hair, though. Account 50. I would like to preface this comment with a few quick notes. The first is that I am not a good person. I am jaded, bitter, mean, defensive, angry, and just an unpleasant person to be around to pretty much anyone who hasn't earned my trust. 
I know it sounds incredibly self-centered and narcissistic, but fuck you. The second is that I do not mess around when it comes to my safety. I fought in Afghanistan and learned the hard way not to take any situation for granted. Lastly, I live an unfortunately interesting life. For better or worse, shit is always happening to around me. Around this time last year, I was walking back from a get-together with some old friends from high school. Nothing major, just a beer and a brutal game of risk. My friend's place was in one of the less hospitable parts of the current city I reside in. So before heading out, I made sure to bring my insurance along. And by that, I mean my compact 45 pistol. Baby Ruth, as I call her, was nestled in an underarm holster by my side, bobbing along with me as I walked. I was enjoying the cool night air and the sounds of passing cars as I traveled to my own vehicle when someone approached me from behind. I had already heard them coming but didn't really think much of it. I had figured they were going to their own car or something. How naive of me. The next thing I know, I am being pushed against my door and struck across my back and shoulders after he connects with the back of my head once driving my face into my car and busting my nose and eyebrow up. I managed to push myself away from my vehicle. My attacker staggered back only to try and come at me again. Joke's on him, though, because in that brief moment, I had drawn my weapon and leveled it right at his face. The look on his face was priceless, nothing but sheer terror. His eyes were like two big dinner plates. I suppose I must have been equally a sight to behold with blood running down my face and a big smile running across it. If there is anything in this world I hate literally more than anything else, it's a thief. And when one attempts to take advantage of me in the dark, in a strange city, they had better bring more than their empty fists to the fight. I cocked the hammer back on my pistol, still smiling and bleeding, hoping beyond hope that this piece of filth tried to come at me again. Fortunately for the both of us, he didn't, though. He simply continued to stare at me blankly. As my blood rage subsided, I thought that perhaps it would be a good idea to turn the tables a little bit. I took his wallet, pants, and shoes before making him turn around, get on his knees, and beg for mercy, swearing to never steal or mug anyone again. I was about to let this fucker go when I had one last sadistic thought. I made him get up and turn around to face me, starring him in the eyes, weapons still pointed at him. I reach up and rack the slide back, throwing the chambered bullet up in the air. I caught the unspent round and threw at his chest and said, This one is free. The next one will cost you a whole lot more. I got in my car, called the cops, and scooted on out of there. 